within this championship, let alone working towards a, a ladder that sees them head up towards, as you mentioned, BSB. Absolutely right, yeah. So they're coming as rookies. They've had a little bit of time often at Scott Reading Academy where they get some practice on an indoor track with some one-to-one -one tuition. Uh, and once they're confident on the bike and they're ready to start racing, they can come and race with us in the rookie category. Uh, and then they move up and as they get... So that's at six. And then they go up, we go up to 13. Um, and as they get older, grow stronger and bigger and, and more proficient on the bike, they'll move up to the uh, bigger and bigger bikes until we're on the, the GP70s at the top of our top our classes. This weekend is the second round of the season. Uh, it's a nice varied calendar. We've got uh, all sorts of different types of circuits. We've already had a round in South Wales. We're going back to Wales. Uh, just give us an overview of the calendar. Yeah, so we try and spread it around the, the UK as much as possible. Uh, we were hoping for a round in Scotland, but we didn't quite get it this year, but hopefully next year. Uh, but we're several around the UK and a couple in Wales. Uh, eight rounds in total. Uh, we're just, just having our second one this weekend. Um, and yeah, lots of different tracks, lots of different services, lots of different different um you know um skills for the riders to learn racing on the different types of tracks and no doubt different types of weather as well so yeah hopefully it gives them a full package over the season obviously many of our listeners will be familiar with the championship um they'll have been tuning into the first round of the season and possibly there's a lot of uh, parents out there uh, listening for updates on their children but if we've got any prospective parents uh, people who might be interested in getting their uh, kids racing um, what what advice can you give them? Where do they need to go and, and what do they need to do on that side of things? Uh, yeah, great. So uh, come on down and watch it. Bring your kids down, see if they like it, see if they like the idea of it. I'm sure they will. It's free for anyone to come around and, down and watch any of our rounds. Um, and uh, just, just come and soak up the atmosphere, wander around the paddock, talk to the, the families who are taking part, talk to the kids who are taking part. They, they love it too. They'll happily chat to you. It's a very friendly, friendly uh, and fun sort of um, weekend. So everyone's very welcoming. And then they can go on to our website uh, coolfabracing.com uh, and there's information there about how they can get started and how they can have their first experience. Welcome back to Red Lodge for round two of the 2017 Cool Fab Racing Mini Bike Championship. And championship points are now on the line. It's the first of three rounds of races here this weekend. So I'm now joined by uh, Luke Mossy, 24-year-old graduate from uh, Fab Racing and a current ambassador for the series as well. Um, clearly here at Red Lodge, this is uh, something of a local round. I think you're based in Cambridge. So uh, always nice to make a trip back to see uh, your roots as well to an extent. Yeah, definitely. It brings a lot of uh, happy memories back. Um, you know, it's just great to see this, uh, the young kids doing, you know, following the dream that we all have in this series. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Obviously, this is uh, part of a career ladder, uh, one that in your case has taken you right up to uh, BSB. Um, tell us a bit about how it worked once you'd moved on from this championship. Um, what the next steps are that these riders can aspire to, uh, be that um, one, two, fives and so on and so forth. Yeah, we, um, we graduated onto the metric at 50s in this series and then onto the 70s. And then they also had a Spanish championship on uh, the metric at metric, um 50cc and 70cc geared bike so uh, we've done that for a year and then we progressed straight into 125s in Spain um, done that for a few years and then we eventually come back to uh, to the UK in 2009 in Superstock 600 and uh, and then we quickly progressed um, after a year straight into Supersport in 2010 um, and then we was there for five years won a couple of races we didn't really have the best years in Supersport to be fair we had a lot of injuries and sort of a lot of setbacks but um you know, we finally made our uh, our debut in uh, the BSB class in 2015, and uh, yeah, third year on, uh, we uh, just won our first race on the on the weekend. So uh, yeah, pretty good. Before we talk about uh, this season, you, you've mentioned Spain there. Uh, a lot of riders seem to get a lot of track time. Is that just so that they can top up their tan as well? What, yeah. what's, what is it all about going to Spain and, and doing extra um, laps? If you go to Spain, it's more 
you get more, a lot, lot more track time, basically. Um, the series are quite good over there because, you know, over here it's quite limited on to what you can do on uh, some of the UK tracks. But, uh, yeah, it's just it's a great stepping stone. And I think uh, young Charlie Nesbitt's doing motor, junior motor free world championship now over there. So, you know, it's great for for him coming from this series as well. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good series back out in Spain. As for uh, back to the UK then, I think your third season now in uh, BSB, so you're well and truly entrenched among the uh, the regular competitors um, in that competition. And, and as you said, uh, a double race victory um, last time out. Uh, you can't really ask for too much better than that, can you? You must have been delighted. Yeah, uh, we got our new engine on uh, the Wednesday. We tested it Wednesday before we headed to Mallory on the first day. And then uh, straight when we got the bike out of the crate on Friday morning, you know, the bike was just superb. Um, we only made minor settings to the bike just to suit the brand's indie circuit and uh, you know we weren't outside the top four all weekend and then coming to qualifying and we qualified second which we was pretty happy about um, uh, we know we done our we all done our homework that weekend with our race pace and uh, yeah eventually got our first maiden win in super bike so just absolutely delighted and then uh, two come along in one so we done the double um, yeah just a, a all-round fantastic weekend the sensation and the comments from a lot of the pundits were, OK, uh, that's the first race victory. Now the floodgates are going to open and then immediately to come out with the second one. I suppose they were quite smug with themselves to have been proved right. Uh, <laughs> two race victories. So where do you go from here? Um, you know, we're second in the championship now, just five points off my teammate Leon. Um, yeah, things are looking really positive. Um, you know, it's only round two. We've still got a long way to go in the season. You know, there's still going to be the likes of Shaky coming through. He's having a bit of a hard time at the moment, but... Um, yeah, just looking really uh, positive. You know, I'm really happy with the bike. I've never had such a strong start to a season, and that's including my super sport career um, and super stock career. But, uh, yeah, it's a long season, and, you know, we've got Alton Park next weekend, another circuit that I really enjoy. You know, we just need to meet, keep making sure that we uh, keep racking up these podium credits ready for uh, for the showdown. And, you know, now we've got these, uh, say, first win, these first two wins, you know, we want a, a couple of more for the end of the season. But, yeah, looking in uh, really good shape now for uh, for the rest of the season. Clearly, you're not uh, perturbed by any of the big names or anything like that. But what's it like to ride alongside um, Leon as a, as a former world number four and a rider with plenty of experience uh, in superbike competition? Work bike, so uh, yeah, we're getting on really well. So it's obviously great for our JG Speedfit Kazaki F. So, uh, you'd rather. Yeah. Um, in terms of you know development of the bike and, and that side of things, how much will you have gained from regular track time? Right, well, since the age of six, I, I would suspect uh, for yourself. Uh, well, I haven't been off a bike since I was six. You know, it's, it's sort of what we these two wins in the weekend of what we've worked and starting here of what we worked all the way through our whole life to uh, to get to. And you know, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But you know, it's what these uh, moments are worth. It. Um, you know, it's just great to see the young kids doing well in this series and obviously the BSB Championship are now involved with the cool, cool Fab Milk Racing. So, uh, yeah, it's just such a great stepping stone starting at this level and uh, hopefully to see a lot of these kids in uh, British Championships in the next couple of years. We always talk at Cool Fab about being a professional athlete, being a professional uh, motor racer, being more than simply going out getting on the bike and, and doing that side of things. Um, using your experience, obviously, racing in BSB, what can you advise the riders? What do they need to be doing to make sure that they get those opportunities, that they're able to, to progress? And then, um, you know, in the same way that you're an ambassador, you're also representing your brand. Um, yeah, what, what are those things? types of things that they need to be doing the biggest thing is really just to keep sticking at it you know eventually it will come and you know you're only young you're learning all the time and i'm still learning now you know on the weekend we was learning again uh, you never stop learning in this game and you know for the kids you know we there's a few times when we was younger that we thought about giving up but you know you just got to keep sticking at it and eventually hopefully something will come along one day and uh, be in such a high championship like bsb at the moment, the target and the focus is obviously to, to win the championship this season. Um, where do you see yourself going forward? What are your aspirations? Because I'm sure that you still um, continue to, to set goals ahead of yourself in the years to come. Uh, you know, it's my third year in BSB, so we're s still early days yet in uh, my career in the British Super Bike Championship. Uh, yeah, obviously now we are looking to be hopefully British champion this year. If not, you know, the next year. It's my third year now with uh, Bournemouth Kazaki. Um, yeah, it's going really well, and you know, like I said, just keep learning, keep chipping away. You know, our first year in BSB weren't didn't really go to plan at the start of the year. I don't think we even got a point till halfway through the season. So um, you know, you've got to keep sticking at it, and um, 
yeah, it'd be nice to uh, to go to World Championships one day. Um, obviously, our sights are set on the BSB at the moment. You know, we're still quite young in our career, so um, yeah, it'd be nice to have a shot at world level. But you know, hopefully, we can uh, be British champion in uh, the next two or three years. Having a look at your uh, social media accounts uh, previously. Um, there's certainly been a lot of activity, uh, clearly, around uh, the double race victory, a lot of media presence and, and that kind of thing, which clearly is something you, you want to capitalise on. Um, is it also quite a lot of pressure um, that you've managed to put on yourself there by taking two race wins? Uh, yeah, I mean, I put more pressure on myself than the team do. You know, I expect myself to win. Um, I'm not there to sort of make up the numbers, you know, without sounding arrogant, you know, I want to win. It's uh, it's all about standing on the, the rostrum for me and tasting that champagne, the winner's champagne. Um, it's nice being in the limelight. Um, yeah, like I said, hopefully we keep getting a few more wins and uh, hopefully we can get spotted to go to uh, to World world Superbikes maybe. But uh... So I'm now joined by uh, Luke Mossy. 20... This is Cool Fab Racing. Live coverage all season on the Cool Fab Racing Facebook page and on the website, coolfabracing.com. Now out onto the circuits for the opening race of the weekend. It's the first round of races in the AC40 Rookies category. Lining up in this one, four of the top five scorers from the opening round in Clandau, including South Wales race three winner Orlando Phillips. But he only qualified down in seventh position. So he now has a lot of work to do uh, from the fourth row of the grid if he wants to make it up to and challenge the top performers from the opening round in South Wales. Well, in the first race weekend of the season, the top four or so broke clear in terms of pace, and they were the only riders to share the podium. The current points leader is Jamie Woodcock, twice winner in Clandau, who finished runner-up in the third race of the weekend and sits ahead on 70 championship points. In fact, nine points clear of Orlando Phillips, who sits on 61 after a race victory in the third race of the weekend, runner-up in race number two. Coming out and uh, round the circuit for the first time on our warm-up lap before the riders assemble on the grid. And then we get underway with the first race action of the weekend. Front row of the grid will include Harrison Crosby, who currently sits fourth in the point standings on 39. Alongside him on the front row, Sullivan Monsi, uh, returning from an elbow injury. The second row of the grid, Luca Hopkins, fifth in the points coming into this event, 35 championship points. He's alongside the championship leader, Jamie Woodcock, uh, 70 championship points, as I said. Two race victories in the opening, two races of the season, and then a runner-up position in race three in Clandau. The third row of the grid, Saffron Watley and Ethan Sparks. And then the fourth row featuring Orlando Phillips and Alfie Davidson. So uh, surprised to, to have seen uh, the current second-place rider, Orlando Phillips, uh, finishing down in seventh position in uh, qualifying but uh, we are now getting underway with the opening race action of the weekends it's Sullivan Mousy then who leads the way ahead of Harris Hopkins in third Jamie Woodcock in fourth position. Phillips immediately making progress up to fifth place at the end of the opening lap Harrison Crosby dropping back Sullivan Mousy coming through Reed. Coming around the top end of the... And out towards the Simpson Strait. And back down. And it Phillips can make pro position in the early stages. Working his way through up into fifth lap. They now cross the line to complete lap number two. It's still Sullivan Mouncey who leads the way with Harrison Crosby in second. Luca Hopkins in third. Jamie Woodcock, the current championship leader in fourth position. Orlando Phillips already up to fifth, but not making too much further progress uh, from there packed closely together in the less than a second between the top three really Jamie Woodcock then in fourth position a bit of a gap uh, behind the top three and to the remainder of that pack Orlando Phillips trying to work his way through from P5 he was just under half a second from Jamie Woodcock the current championship leader in terms of the championship battle those two riders sit fourth and fifth at the moment the top two in the series overall so an opportunity for a few of their rivals to uh, try and make back some ground here as we work our way back down towards Paddock Bend to complete the third lap of the race. Leads the way on that last lap. So uh, 
Harrison Crosby now matching his pace, a new personal best for uh, the majority of the riders in the top eight. Only Sullivan Mouncey not improving on his previous best and Harrison Crosby gaining a little bit of ground. You can see it's uh, nice and tight between those top two. The gap starting to uh, grow between the remainder of the pack, but the top three are very closely packed together. Mouncey in front, Crosby in second, Hopkins starting to be dropped back slightly in uh, third position, but all with Andon Hopkins was the far challenges through the side of Sullivan Mouncey, who missed the opening round and has a lot of points to make up clearly in the context of the championship overall with the top score at the opening round scoring 70. That's a lot of points to haul in, but it's been a promising start from Sullivan Mouncey. A new fastest lap of the race from Harrison Crosby in P2. It's only a slight gain though on Mouncey with the gap still at uh, just over two tenths of a second between the top th top two. Uh, Luca Hopkins sitting in third position. All of the top three running 55 nines last lap around. Whether that means they're holding back one another's pace at this stage uh, remains to be seen. Jamie Woodcock, the current championship leader, some way adrift now of the top three. Five seconds in arrears in fourth position. Fifth place with Orlando Phillips, who after bursting through from seventh to fifth uh, in the run in, in the opening lap, has uh, then been stuck in fifth position, none able to make any further progress. He's still half a second behind Jamie Woodcock, as he has been uh, for the majority of these opening laps. We're halfway through now uh, this race number one in the AC40 rookies category, and the top trio are starting to negotiate lap traffic and try and work their way through as they come off Paddock Bend to complete lap number five. Mouncey only narrowly in front from Harrison Crosby. The gap down to less than two tenths of a second now. Luca Hopkins, as I said on the previous lap, has dropped back slightly and Crosby is certainly going after the race leader. He tries to go wider in through there in towards 180 and see if he can then get the cut back and see if he'll be uh, aided by any of the back markers here. Not so far. He looks up to the inside though and it looks as though he may have made that pass successfully either side of the back marker and it was Crosby who went the right way and he's managed to hit the front so it's Harrison Crosby then in front now from Sullivan Mouncey who's going to have to try and remount his assault from second position he's running wider around the eternal top bend that leads into the S's it tightens up here and Crosby it is who holds position as they come through the left right and we have a fall for Sullivan Mouncey who was giving it everything to get back on the tail of Harrison Crosby and uh, he's just come down and flipped it and uh, Mouncey then obviously uh, down on the deck with uh, the early race leader now out of contention for the race victory and Harrison Crosby, the new race leader. Crosby had already made it through. Mouncey was trying to uh, recapture the position, just coming through the S's and onto the Simpson straight and losing it. And that's given, uh, well, the others in the top four, obviously an opportunity to be promoted into the podium positions with Harrison Crosby now leading by over seven seconds from Jamie Woodcock in second position. Orlando Phillips almost a second back in third and Ethan Sparks also separated from Phillips by a sizable margin. So Orlando Phillips by working his way through the field from seventh and up to fourth, has ended up moving his way back into a podium position and on the tail of Jamie Woodcock. In terms of the championship battle, it's second and third positions that are key for the moment. Jamie Woodcock and Orlando Phillips, the top two in the championship in that order, separated by nine points coming into the second weekend of the campaign. And at the moment, they're separated by less than a second. Crosby is away and gone out in front, over seven seconds clear. The race is for second, Woodcock versus Phillips. The gap narrowing all the time and still pretty tight between those two as they try to work their way through lap traffic. And that's what caused the uh, position changes up front or certainly facilitated them uh, with a 57-4. His lap last, uh, he can ease it up as we head on to uh, a red flag situation. Now, the red flags are out. Uh, that's going to uh, bring a halt to proceedings here.
This is Cool Fab Racing. Live coverage all season on the Cool Fab Racing Facebook page and on the website, coolfabracing.com. the start line for the second race of the day here at Red Lodge. We're on to the Mini GP 50 category, the top five in the current championship standings, all lining up on the front three rows of the grid. So we should see some lively action heading down to the first turn, the left-hander. Here we line up then, and off the front row, it's Casey O'Gorman, 75 points out of a possible 75, the race winner in all three races in the opening round at Clandau. Alongside him, Corey Stainer, currently second in the championship, two second places and a fourth position in the second race in South Wales. He sits on 53 points, a point ahead of Evan Belford, who's third on the grid. So the top three in the championship lining up in the top three positions on the grid. Belford has Bailey Stewart-Campbell alongside him. What a performance it was 
uh, from Bailey Stewart Campbell on the 99 bike in qualifying. Uh, currently 10th in the championship, point standings on 20 after a non-scoring race in the third race of the weekend at the opening round. But a brilliant fourth position in qualifying gives him an opportunity to make back some of that lost ground. The third row of the grid, the fourth and fifth position riders in the current championship standings. Finn Smart, who sits fourth on uh, 40 championship points, and Sandy Horn, who sits fifth on 33. So the challenge for these riders is to try and get on terms with Casey O'Gorman as quickly as possible before he continues to stretch away his championship lead. He's managed to get pole position by uh, almost a second in qualifying. And now it's just a question of whether Corey Stainer or any of the others can give him a run for his money in the first race of the weekend here at uh, Red Lodge in the Mini GP50 category. The riders watching then for the lights. And we're underway. Uh, poor start from P6. And Sandy Horn's got away very poorly there uh, with a lot of lift off the line. And that's going to have cost a few positions. The top two breaking clear and away together. Casey O'Gorman and Corey Stainer, just as they did in the opening round in Clandau, are renewing their duel, renewing their rivalry as they go side by side into the top bend and through the S's and working their way around the technical section before they come down the Simpson Strait towards Paddock Bend and to the completion of of the opening lap. The uh, top four now have pretty sizable margins between them. We've got uh, a good battle on though for fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh places. It looks as though Bailey Stewart Campbell has lost a couple of places off the line. It's Casey O'Gorman who leads then at the end of the opening lap by over a second from Corey Stainer. I did suggest that the gap seemed to be emerging quite dramatically. Bailey Stewart Campbell did indeed lose a position on the opening lap to Finn Smart as I suggested. Smart is up to fifth position. Sandy Horn managed to recover from what I suggested might have been a poor start but ended up working out quite well because by the end of the opening lap Horn was up to fourth position so it's O'Gorman from Stainer from Belford Horn in fourth position Finn Smart having got the better of Bailey Stewart Campbell on the opening lap I just cannot believe the margin that Casey O'Gorman now has at the end of two completed laps the race already is over second Evan Belford just over two tenths of a second behind Corey Stainer but uh, well they're almost a full length of a straight behind it's absolutely astonishing the way that the uh, front runners have broken clear so it's O'Gorman from Stainer from Belford uh, Horn over a second back from the top three battle now and the podium positions well it looks as though it could be O'Gorman, Stainer and Belford what order they'll finish in remains to be seen and there's still some good races uh, further down the order as well with Finn Smart and Bailey Stewart Campbell and Thomas Gomes all within just over a second of Sandy Horn and it's second and third positions that are tightening up at the moment between Corey Stainer and Evan Belford uh, this time around though four tenths of a second between them so a little bit of a break Corey Stainer though six seconds behind Casey O'Gorman already after three completed laps and O'Gorman can probably afford to relax up the pace now a little bit and still hold on to the race lead. Bailey Stewart Campbell under some pressure from Thomas Gomes there uh, further back through the field as they work their way through with a little bit of twitching just trying to ensure uh, that they hold their respective positions. Gomes is at the back of that group there. The race uh, in terms of second position still pretty close, but there's no movement in it. Corey Stainer seven seconds back from the leader now. Half a second back to Norbest lap from both third positions. And actually new personal best for Horn, Smart, Bailey Stewart, Campbell all behind. Further back through the field, there's a separate group from uh, eighth position down. And Karis Jones has just got the better of Sean Abel on that last lap to move up into ninth position. They are almost side by side once again for second place. Evan Belford is really giving it everything here but it seems as though Corey Stainer on the last couple of turns of each lap is able to just stretch away his advantage once again and hold on to that second position. Evan Belford certainly showing some turns of pace and Stainer and Belford again on that last lap setting new personal bests. Finn Smart and Bailey Stewart Campbell doing the same so the group is going together but uh, no doubt about the current race leader it's Casey O'Gorman. Still second and third positions is where the closest battle is aside from that uh, fight between Bailey Stewart Campbell and Thomas Gomes over sixth and seventh seventh places. Finally, the front runner starting to spread out slightly and Casey O'Gorman is away and gone. 33-3, uh, his personal best so far. In this race, Casey O'Gorman at uh, the opening round in class was challenged. He didn't have in this opening race in the Mini GP 50 category. It's O'Gorman from Stainer from Belford in third. Sandy Horn in fourth position with a new personal best last lap around. Tracked in fifth position by Finn Smart, who uh, gained fractionally but not significantly on that last lap around.
Second and third position, Stainer and Belfort just coming over the uh, start-finish line once again. Second and third positions, and still that half-second gap is static. Sandy Horn, though, starting to make up some ground from fourth position, and what was a three-way tussle for the podium is starting to develop into a pack of five riders now as Finn Smart tries to go with Sandy Horn and onto the tail of Corey Stainer and Evan Belford in uh, second and third positions. Race leader comfortable, Casey O'Gorman coming over the start-finish line at the end of lap number eight and just waiting for the rest of the field to start to come through. Uh, starting to lap well through the field now as well, Casey O'Gorman. Ten seconds the gap to Corey Stainer and uh, Evan Belford tucked in right behind. Finn Smart has dropped over a second back now uh, from Sandy Horn. So the race is for second, third and fourth positions. Three riders in a group together. They've been completely dropped by Casey O'Gorman, but uh, no change in positions at the moment between Stainer Belford and Sandy Horn, who's managed to gain on this group while Stainer has seemingly held back Belford. Belford closest he's been throughout this race now to Corey Stainer over second position and Sandy Horn, as I said, gaining all the time on those two in that race for second, third and fourth positions and Horn right on the tail now visibly within three tenths of a second of Evan Belford and each time Belford gets back onto the tail of Corey Stainer he ends up dropping back into the clutches of Sandy Horn. Those four now have broken over three seconds clear of Finn Smart who's in a separate race with Bailey Stewart Campbell on the number 99 bike who's dropped Thomas Gomes behind him so in the context of the championship Casey O'Gorman the current championship leader is out in front once again. Corey Stainer who had two runner-up positions in Landau looks set for another here as they work their way through the lap traffic around Paddock Bend and that's not a great place to meet lap traffic. It's held back Sandy Horn slightly uh, who was on the tail end of that group and half a second is now the gap between third and fourth positions. It's O'Gorman out in front by almost 13 seconds now from Corey Stainer in P2. Evan Belford in third place. The gaps are remaining static and it's just a question of whether Belford can find a way through because he certainly seems to have the pace advantage on Corey Stainer but uh, can't find any way to capitalise on that advantage. Casey O'Gorman out in front is weaving through lap traffic with some ease now. The second and third place riders just coming over the start-finish line over 13 seconds back. Evan Belford, half a second from Corey Stainer in second. Sandy Horn, half a second further in arrears. Finn Smart, four seconds back. And Bailey Stewart Campbell is going with Finn Smart. Still, there's uh, two races in one here. One battle between three riders over second place and a separate battle over fifth position between the number 14, Finn Smart, and the 99, Bailey Stewart Campbell, with Thomas Gomes just waiting for it to all go wrong for the two riders up ahead of him, having been uh, dropped earlier on the race. Uh, by those two. Still no change then. It does look as though Sandy Horn has dropped visibly back from Corey Stainer and uh, Evan Belford on that last lap. It's still O'Gorman comfortably clear. Uh, it does indeed uh, appear that uh, the back rider in that group has dropped back, but it's Evan Belford who has dropped down into fourth position with Sandy Horn coming through. They're trying to exchange positions once again as they go into the top turn. That everlasting left-hander that ends through the S's. Horn holding the inside line. Sensible decision as they cut their way through the back markers and uh, Evan Belford up in fourth place uh, but dropping back at the expense of Sandy Horn. It's been a great race from the number 18 to come through to third position. Now has Horn got an answer to Corey Stainer who sits in P2. That's the first major overtake of the race. Sandy Horn getting the better of Evan Belford on lap number 12. They're now 13 laps into the race. We're on lap number 14 and heading down towards the finish. It's O'Gorman in front. Corey Stainer in second position over 16 seconds back. O'Gorman has has put in a masterclass in this one to uh, head well clear into the closing stages. Corey Stainer in second position, then Sandy Horn in third. Has Horn got the pace advantage to be able to go after Corey Stainer now? The uh, uh, half a second, more or less, was what was gained last lap by Horn versus Stainer. We'll see if it's a similar situation as they come over the line this time around with back markers once again in play. Again, Sandy Horn gaining in about half a second on Corey Stainer and the gaps come down from one and a half seconds between the pair to little more than half a second between Corey Stainer in second place and Sandy Horn in third. It's O'Gorman in front, Stainer in second, Horn in third, Belford in fourth position. Bailey Stewart Campbell has got the better of Finn Smart. So that uh, long enduring who had to make up some, make up some positions in the championship this weekend 
ahead to 10th position after the opening round of the season in Clandau. We're now into the final lap with Casey O'Gorman well clear and out in front. The rest of the pack filter to second position. Sandy Horn then in third. Evan Belford in fourth position and Bailey Stewart Campbell less than a second ahead of Finn Smart. The one who was well clear through still and second and third positions are still at the top end of the circuit uh, fighting it out. But it looks as though Corey Stainer is going to come home comfortably clear in the end of Sandy Horn and Evan Belford is going to get the better of Horn as well. So that's another position change in the closing stages. Evan Belford getting the better of Sandy Horn. It's O'Gorman then from Stainer, from Belford and Horn and Bailey Stewart Campbell next over the line to uh, complete that one uh, up in fifth position. So uh, O'Gorman, Stainer and Belford uh, in that order will be the three podium finishers in the opening race of the weekend in Mini GP50. But that was a highly entertaining and excellent ride from Sandy Horn, only for it to go wrong in the latter stages with Evan Belford coming back through. Good racing for positions two to four and a separate battle uh, between three riders, Bailey Stewart Campbell, Thomas Gomes and Finn Smart for fifth, sixth and seventh positions. In the end, it's Smart who loses out and finishes down in seventh, having dropped two places. First, Bailey Stewart Campbell coming through and then Thomas Gomes coming through as well. Stewart Campbell was up in fourth position on the grid but dropped a couple of places in the early stages and had to work his way back through to fifth. Ended up in a separate race, so almost eight seconds back from the uh, top four battle. And O'Gorman was so far clear that he was almost in a separate race over 17 seconds out in front. So it's O'Gorman who wins it from Corey Stainer in second, Evan Belford in third, Sandy Horn in fourth, and Bailey Stewart Campbell rounding out the top five. onto the combined pit bike 140 and moto team categories. The lineup on the grid for this one, uh, well, three, two of the uh, top four in the moto team category in the current championship standings featuring on the front two rows of the grid, but we've got a few new names this weekend and a couple of riders who didn't fare too successfully in the opening round of the season who've improved their form this weekend. So pole sitter is Sam Klaus, who sits down in fourth position in class. It was a good qualifying session for him. Half a second clear of James Blackburn, who sits alongside him on P2. The second row of the grid, the current uh, third place rider in the Moto Team class is Will Howarth. 54 championship points. He's 14 clear of Sam Klaus, but sits uh, directly behind him on the starting line. Alex Vela completes the second row on the 6-2-1 bike in fourth position. Fifth place is with the current second place rider in the pit bike 140 category, Ben Pascoe, who sits on 60 championship points. And the second place rider at the moment in the Moto Team class, which is Steve Ball, who was the class winner in the Moto Team category in the opening race of the weekend in Clandau. Things didn't quite work out as well for him in subsequent races, although he finished runner-up to Hudson Kenneth, the current championship leader in the Moto team who is sitting out this weekend. Fraser Kinnaird on row number four is currently fifth in moto team. That gives you the picture of the top performers coming into race number one in the pit bike 140 and moto team categories. Sam Klaus, the pole, pole sitter with a poor start there, immediately drops back down to fourth position. So uh, a very bad start for him, but uh, the rest of the pack away pretty well. Second place in particular, James Blackburn, who uh, didn't feature at the opening round of the season, but looks set to make an immediate impact already uh, appearing on the front row the grid after a P2 position in qualifying half a second clear of Will Howarth 
Remember, as these riders filter around, that there's two classes in one here. So finishing in the top three of the race obviously will guarantee you a podium. But in theory, we could see a fourth place rider make it onto a podium or even uh, further back than that. It's the Pit Bike 140 riders who have their top three at the moment in the race. So uh, looking at the Moto Team classes, Will Howarth, Fraser Kinnaird and Steve Ball is their top three. The top three on track are James Blackburn, Alex Vela and Sam Klaus. Klaus trying to find his way back through now from third position as they work their way uh, towards the Simpson Strait on lap number two. The closest race is for second position between Alex Vela and Sam Klaus. A big gap then to fourth position in the race, which is the top performer at the moment in the Moto Team category, and that's Will Howarth. They head back down towards turn number one, the centre complex, and Klaus not close enough to challenge on the tail of Alex Vela, but was the fastest rider on that last lap and is now visibly closing up to P2. Less than two tenths of a second between second and third places at the end of that second lap. He's going deep around the outside. He's going to try and run all the way around the outside. That'll give him the inside advantage then on the right-hander and onto the Simpson straight and a perfectly executed move from uh, Sam Klaus to recover second place. Now, does he have enough to go after James Blackburn? This is an important weekend for Sam Klaus. He was the pole sitter. He's going to be the pole sitter throughout this weekend, of course, after his excellent efforts in quality but he missed out off the line and is now being made to work very hard indeed. As I said, Alex Vela dropping back a position on that last lap. Klaus up to uh, P2 now and setting a new fastest lap of the race with a 34.7 on that lap number three. Four tenths of a second still to make up on James Blackburn, but it looks though as though it's a lot less than that now as they come back towards the Simpson straight once again on lap number four. And Klaus is all over the tail of James Blackburn. Blackburn has the position. Klaus has the speed. Will Blackburn be able to hold him off it's a long race to try and defend throughout and Blackburn needs to find some extra pace he sets his own personal best lap and Klaus comes over the line right behind him so James Blackburn is trying to step up the pace now ahead of Sam Klaus in second position Alex Vela in third Will Howarth in fourth further back in the moto team class Steve Ball has made progress at the expense of Fraser Kinnaird who's dropped back to eighth position in the race that's fourth position in class so it's a race in the leading positions between James Blackburn and Sam Klaus ahead of Alex Vela. The top three separated by just over a second and the top two in particular as tight as you could possibly want. Three tenths of a second. But since making it onto the tail of James Blackburn, Sam Klaus hasn't really been able to make too much further progress. I mentioned Fraser Kinnaird. He's dropped uh, right back to the back now. So uh, out of my line of sight, I'm not sure entirely what happened there, whether that was a mechanical issue. But Kinnaird's gone to the back after sitting in the top three places in class, leaving Will Howard, Steve Ball and Keith Bolton the current top three in the Moto Team category. Steve Ball in particular on the march with a new personal best last time around, a 35-7. The uh, current race leader just coming over the line to start lap number seven, James Blackburn with a new fastest lap of the race, a 34-3. Sam Klaus though, not too far behind him at all and they're coming up to a pair of back markers who are involved in their own separate race and uh, both cutting their way through. Is that going to give an opportunity to Klaus to try and make a pass. He's certainly trying to move around on the tail of his rider and rival and wait for an opportunity. Klaus right on the tail of Blackburn, but Blackburn has successfully negotiated that lap traffic and still holds the race lead. It's Blackburn in front then from Klaus in second. Alex Vela in third position being dropped comprehensively now by these top two. And then there's a separate race, almost uh, a four in terms of those leading pair. It's a half second gap. James Blackburn was two tenths of a second faster than Sam Klaus on that last lap. Klaus has got straight back onto his tail. Blackburn looking the wrong way. Klaus was going around the outside of that uh, right-hander at the end of that sweeping left and now onto the main straight once again at the end of lap number eight. And it's James Blackburn in front. A new fastest lap of the race from Sam Klaus. A 34 flat. Almost three tenths, well just over three tenths of a second faster than James Blackburn last time around. Klaus then is on the march once again. Two tenths of a second between them as they come into the top turn and around that everlasting left and a patience is the key as they come into the S's and down goes the rider in second position Sam Klaus who was chasing the race leader so uh, Sam Klaus who was the pole sitter who dropped back to third place who recovered to second is now out of contention for the race lead James Blackburn is going to go away and uh, unless something dramatic happens to the uh, newly comfortable race leader James Blackburn should be on his way towards victory it's a question of where Sam Klaus now filters back in into the group he's dropped a couple of places but he is still running he's 
He's in fifth place now, Sam Klaus. Uh, sixth place, possibly, behind uh, Steve Ball, behind Ben Pascoe, behind Will Howarth uh, in the uh, Moto Team category, the current leader in that Moto Team class. It's James Blackburn then who leads it now from Alex Vella, five seconds behind. Will Howarth is in third position in the race now and uh, up in the lead position in terms of that Moto Team category, of course. Ben Pascoe inherits third position in the Pit Bike 140 category. Ben Pascoe, who currently sits second in the championship in the Pit Bike class, just watching uh, the riders filter back around turn one once again up towards Senna just to see where Sam Klaus is filtering through. He's up on the tail of Steve Ball, which is for fifth position in the race. He's actually looking set to take that fifth position. He comes thundering down the inside in towards the S's, into that long left-hander, and he has made that move stick. So uh, up to fifth position once again, it's Sam Klaus with Steve Ball relegated backwards. It's James Blackburn who leads the way from Alex Vella in second, third place, and close to him, it's Will Howarth, but they're in separate classes, of course. Will Howarth uh, a second now in arrears of Alex Vella, who sits in P2, but in terms of the pick bike, one four category is Blackburn, Vela and Pasco in that order. I did confirm that earlier in that lap, Sam Klaus got the better of Steve Ball up the inside into the top turn. Klaus is now up to fifth position. Ball dropped down to sixth. Keith Bolton still rounding out the top seven in uh, seventh position. So it's Blackburn from Vela up front by almost seven seconds. James Blackburn really inheriting a comfortable race lead as a result of that fall for his main rival in the race, Sam Klaus. And we were in for a pretty spectacular race until that incident occurred. So a real shame actually because those two were really going at it Sam Klaus having fought his way past James Blackburn Blackburn battling back holding on to the race lead the harder Klaus attacked the more uh, error strewn it started to become and he just lost it uh, coming around the end of the left hander at what they call the S's here at Red Lodge and uh, well that's uh, ended his race as a challenge but he is still having to work his way through sits in fifth position in the race fourth position in class that's still a decent haul of points that are in prospect for uh, Sam Klaus who was a podium finisher in the second race of the weekend in Clandau looks set to miss out on the podium this time around with uh, just a little bit too much work to do I would suggest with less than five laps remaining now uh, for Sam Klaus to make up some of that ground a new personal best last lap around from Ben Pasco who sits one position clear of uh, Sam Klaus he was half a second slower but uh, four seconds is still the deficit for Sam Klaus to make up and unless he can find a second a lap he's going to run out of time to try and make back that position Still close between second and third on track, remembering that those two riders are in separate classes. That's uh, Alex Vela on the 621 bike and the 96 of Will Howarth, two tenths of a second in arrears, fractionally faster that last lap than Alex Vela, the current leader in the Moto Team category. Doesn't need to do too much about trying to gain an extra position because he is already his class leader. Ben Pasco behind him on track, trying to respond to Sam Klaus. That gap down to uh, just over three seconds now. So I said that Klaus needs about a second a lap. Well, he's gained seven tenths on that last lap. It's not quite a second, but that's where the race is. Fourth and fifth positions with Sam Klaus trying to make up ground at the moment on P4. James Blackburn with 15 completed laps is well clear out in front. Eight seconds up on Alex Vela in second position. Still close to the tail of him is Will Howarth in third. Fourth position with Ben Pasco. Sam Klaus still making progress on the 31 bike. That gap down to uh, just over one and a half seconds now. And fourth and fifth positions are going to come alive in the latter stages between the 81 and the 31. And that's for third in class. Third step on the podium in the pit bike 140 category with Klaus closing all the time on Ben Pasco. Does he have enough time to make it? He could do with doing so in the context of the championship Pasco sits 20 points clear of him after the opening round of the season in Clandau Alex Vela's dropped back behind Will Howarth now but as I said previously that doesn't mean too much in terms of uh, the fact that those two are in separate classes Will Howarth in the moto team category and Alex Vela of course in the pit bike 140s the focus in the context of these podium places is uh, Sam Klaus who actually seems to have dropped back once again Steve Ball uh, coming past him uh, Steve Ball is a moto team rider so again doesn't have an impact in the context of that race um, there's a whole stream of riders now working their way through Paddock Bend all together and Will Howarth is in the mix of that group along with Alex Vela who's right tucked up behind him now second and third positions in this race Ben Pascoe in that separate battle Sam Klaus has had uh, a disastrous lap last time around so uh, not sure what happened there to him uh, but uh, he's now out of contention once again so it's James Blackburn who leads it from Will Howarth in second Alex Vela in third 
Ben Pasco in uh, fourth position and Steve Ball completing the top five. This is a good race from uh, Steve Ball in the context of the Moto Team Championship. He sat uh, two points clear ahead of Will Howarth coming into this one. Howarth's going to get the better of him here. Howarth will take third in the race. Alex Vella coming back through there in the closing stages. So good job from Alex Vella. James Blackburn and Alex Vella then finishing in the top two in the pit bike 140 category. And those were two of the riders who didn't feature in the opening round. So an important third position in the pit bike 140 category for Ben Pascoe, who finishes fourth in the race. But that uh, enables him to take a sizable haul of points in the context of the series overall. In terms of the Moto Team category, Will Howard, Steve Ball and uh, Keith Bolton is the eventual top three there. So a look at the race result and it's James Blackburn who takes the win by over eight seconds ahead of Alex Vela in second. Third place going the way of Will Howarth, a race long battle between Vela and Howarth. But of course they are in separate classes, separate categories. Uh, so that didn't impact too much on their uh, positions in the context of the championship overall. Ben Pasco fourth in the race is third in the pit bike 140 category. Fifth position in the race and well adrift of the top four was Steve Ball. Sam Klaus held that position for much of the race after uh, falling in the early stages while challenging on the tail of James Blackburn. That race turned into an outright disaster for Sam Klaus, who finishes well down the order in the end, but will at least have the consolation of a pole position start uh, once again next time they come out onto the circuit for the second round of races in the pit bike 140 and moto team categories. Blackburn, Vela, Howarth, Pasco, and Ball, the top five finishers in that mixed grid, race number one in the pit bike 140 and moto team classes. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. The official partner series to the BSB. to the first race of the weekend in the Mini GP 70 category. Interestingly, the championship leader at the moment, Joshua Watley, missing uh, this weekend. He's out in the uh, Spanish uh, championship and he's racing at Valencia in the Moto4 category, so he won't be taking part this weekend, and that opens up the championship to the four of his nearest rivals. Second position in the series at the moment is Harvey Claridge, who sits on pole position on the grid. Callum Beach alongside him on the front row. On the second row of the grid, we've got Jeremy Knights, who's currently fourth in the series standings. Alongside him, Brody Crockford, currently fifth in the points, and five points in arrears of Knights. So Claridge is the uh, net leader, as long as he can score enough points this weekend to move above Joshua Watley. Callum Beach 12 points in arrears of him after a non-scoring race in the second race of the weekend at uh, Clandau. Uh, we're just about to get underway then with race number one in the Mini GP 70 category. Good start from fourth position on the grid from Brody Crockford who's away and up into third position immediately. Uh, close between third, fourth and fifth positions as they come up the hill and towards the S's and in fact Crockford is making further progress diving through to 
second place into the top turn through the S's and onto the uh, Simpson Straight. The uh, race for second, third, fourth and fifth positions at the moment as the early race leader breaks well clear. Crockford with some brilliant progress there on lap number one up from fourth position and into P2 as they filter around Paddock Bend and onto the start finish straight once again to complete lap number one. It's Callum Beach then who was the uh, early race leader from second on the grid. But Brody Crockford is the rider on the move to have moved up through the field and up into second position. So as the riders uh, filter through and down towards the end of lap working. number two, we uh, look so. to Harvey Claridge, the current race leader, ahead of Brody Crockford in P2. Incredibly, the gap between the top two was uh, over two seconds at the end of that opening lap, and it looks similar at the end of lap number two. Well, I'm joined in uh, commentary, delighted to say I'm joined in commentary by uh, Brad Ray, one of the uh, Cool Fab Hall of Fame riders. And uh, after a very impressive 2016 season, you've uh, well and truly earned your place alongside me in commentary to uh, call the action here today. Uh, glad to be back with Cool Fab. Yeah, definitely. It's nice to come, uh, come back to the grassroots where I first started and uh, watch these up and coming riders. Some new names for you, perhaps. Uh, Brody Crockford is, is one uh, for the memory archives. He's already worked his way through from fourth up to second position on the green livery machine, heading just down to uh, turn number one. He's dropped well back from Harvey Claridge, though. Claridge was away and gone while Crockford was working his way through. And it's Crockford who still holds second position. The race at the moment for second, third and fourth places. Jeremy Knight is up in fourth position, a new personal best on that last lap from him. And now he's just got to keep his focus as they work through the technical infield sections um, those are really the challenging bits of the circuit, but I suppose probably the positions on the track where you can make up the most ground. Yeah, definitely, especially if you're out in front. Um, it's good to have a clear lap in front um, and do your own lines. And uh, like Harvey is now, he's just got his head down. He's got out in front. And uh, if you uh, try and concentrate and not make too many mistakes, it's a lot easier than battling away uh, in second and third. So it's best to, to get out in front. Interestingly now, Brody Crockford has also got some clear air. It's a question of whether he can try to match the pace of Harvey Claridge, who's made that early break. The race at the moment is for third position between Jay Abel and uh, Jeremy Knight, and they're bringing Louis Rendell and Oscar Pinson with them, uh, all setting new personal bests last time around. Jay Abel fractionally slower than Jeremy Knight as Harvey Claridge, as you just said, uh, he's got his head down, and another new fastest lap of the race from Harvey Claridge, who is almost half a second a lap faster at the moment than Brody Crockford in second. Crockford has a decent advantage over Jay Abel in third position and Jeremy Knight in fourth place. And the moment, the race is for third and fourth positions as they come back around and end towards the end of uh, lap number six. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a close one between second, third and fourth. Um, Harvey's obviously uh, run away with it as long as he stays concentrated and um, does his own thing, then I think it's definitely going to be a battle for, for second and third got a separate battle uh, starting to develop here uh, between uh, Louis Rendell and Oscar Pinson. That gap now uh, less than half a second with Pinson making fractions up on uh, Rendell. Uh, it's the orange liveried machine of Oscar Pinson who's trying to make up ground. He was almost alongside uh, coming down the Simpson straight last time around but couldn't quite make it. See if he can uh, do something about it here. We've got two races in one. Uh, a battle for third position and a battle for P5 as they come back down towards us here in our commentary position. Yeah it looks, just looks like brody has got a little bit of a gap just to, uh, to keep third and fourth behind him. Um, I mean, if he can keep that for the whole race, then I'm certain he's got second place. But, I mean, it, it looks like a more of a battle for the, the last step on the rostrum. Yeah, and at the moment that's between Jay Abel and uh, Jeremy Knight who are still closely packed as they come around the top bend and then dropping back uh, the two riders behind them but involved in their own separate fight, Louis Rendell and uh, Oscar Pinson. And while the race stabilises, uh, dare I say it, that gives us an opportunity to uh, just have a, a bit more of a catch-up with yourself. Uh, very impressive 2016 season, as I said previously when we first uh, went on air. So uh, plans for this season, uh, enjoyment of this season, what What's in the future for you? Uh, to be fair, this year's a, a big step for me, a uh, big learning year. Uh, jumping up into the superbike class from Super Sport, it's not easy. But I mean, I've got a good team behind me, a team that have said there's no pressure for this year. Just go out, uh, learn how to ride a superbike and um, enjoy yourself. Uh, and for me, that's, that's a big thing because uh, if a team puts pressure on you in your first year, you start making mistakes which you don't need. Um, and already we're sort of uh, we're sort of showing good pace on the superbike. Um, we've just got to stay grounded, keep learning, learn from all the, the other riders. 
And, and you're, uh, you're, you're in good company as well there because there's, uh, a, a, as we were saying earlier on in our program, uh, a good couple of uh, Cool Fab Racing uh, graduates who are out there and, and one in particular who has uh, just made his name by taking two race victories. So as I say, you're in good company and that's a good sign for the future, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. To be out on track with, with the likes of like uh, Hopkins uh, and Sylvain Gintoli, all them sort of people who I've watched growing up in my career and and to be at Brands and to overtake Hopkins and beat him to the line was was so surreal and, and quite surprising. But I mean, I'm still learning. It's going to be a learning year all year. And um, the, the new Suzuki is a good bike. And I think it's just going to take a little bit more time. Uh, but I mean, I've got a good team behind me and I just got to keep learning. And talking about these riders who are still learning their trade but giving us uh, plenty of entertainment at the moment. A good battle on for third position as we rejoin that race between Jay Abel and Jeremy Knight. There was less than a tenth of a second uh, behind between them on that last lap. Um, it looks as though it's been fairly challenging for the riders to find an appropriate overtaking place. Is that because of the uh, high speed nature? I mean, the longest straight on this circuit leads into a fast left-hander so there's no real major braking zone for someone to make a big lunge. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the bikes are so so equal. Um, it is hard to to make a move anywhere, and there's not too many corners around this track that you can make them. And, and if you do, it's sort of a lunge and and sort of stand the other rider up. That's about it. But if you can get a good drive out the corner and, and be good on the brakes, I'm sure you can make a move somewhere. And the moment the gaps are fairly static, uh, that race between uh, Louis Rendell and Oscar Pinson has sort of been ended. Pinson, uh, a lap ago, had a, had a bit of a wobble, a bit of a moment. He's lost a position. Callum Beach has come through up to P6. So the uh, current positions now are Harvey Claridge out in front. He's away and gone. Forget about him. Six seconds clear. And barring any errors, he's going to take the uh, first race victory of the weekend. The current second place man in the championship who is set to move into the championship lead this weekend. Still that race is on going for third position that's as close as that's been between uh, Jay Abel and Jeremy Knight but again as you said it's very difficult for him to get alongside and each time he does get alongside he's having to make the decision to back out of it he can't quite get half a bike length alongside to try and make that stand-up move that you were talking about yeah that's it if you can get close enough to, to think about a move then you should be close enough to make a move um, but it is, it is quite difficult um, as you can see he's right right on his tail now so if he could just stay there and try and line up a move in the next lap and think about it it'd be it'd be fine He's certainly getting closer, but uh, well, it's going to take something special to find his way through. There's about a bike length between them still. Uh, once again, still less than two tenths of a second between those two for the last two or three laps. Uh, Jay Abel at the moment holding that third position over a second back from Brody Crockford, who has, uh, to be fair to him, uh, managed to maintain the pace of Harvey Claridge out in front, but uh, perhaps is going to need another sensational start next time around to see if he can uh, get the better of Claridge when we obviously get to round two. For the moment, the focus in the round one race in this mini GP70 category is that battle between third and fourth position it's getting closer all the time and again he's having to back out of it at the last moment yeah it's a, it's a bit frustrating to be in places like that because you just want to make a move um, but yeah he's, he's showing good pace and I think if he can get close enough he will make a move He's certainly trying to do so. If you can manage to get all the way around the outside of that left-hander, obviously you have the inside then into the right-hander, but it's so much further to go. So um, that move uh, worked out in the uh, pit bike uh, race, but it hasn't worked out in any of these categories. And still the gap around about a tenth of a second as they come towards the start-finish line once again and complete the race. Well, what an excellent battle that was between Jay Abel and Jeremy Knight, but in the end, no way for Knight to come through. He kept trying up the inside coming off the final bend looking down the inside of the straight straight not long enough though for him to find a way through no that's it he, you can't knock him he tried his best there to, to get on the last base on the rostrum and I'm sure he, he'll work it out for a race two well, the official result, uh, Harvey Claridge, the winner then, ahead of Brody Crockford in second. A great start it was for Crockford and involved in the battling right from the start. Jay Abel and Jeremy Knight in their own race for third position. Louis Rendell versus Callum Beach and Oscar Pinson <coughs> further down the order. Pinson held sixth place and was right on the tail of Rendell, but got it wrong and dropped out of contention as the race went on. Still, two really entertaining battles there in the Mini GP 70 class. So continuing our conversation then uh, with Brad Ray and uh, I, I suppose what we want to get from you is an idea of what the riders need to be doing, what they need to be aspiring to, to end up in your position because I'm sure that for every rider who does make it, there's someone who doesn't. So uh, for you, what do you think it was that maybe you were doing at this point when you were out on the track that helped you to get where you are into BSB, which is the goal? Um, <laughs> 
To be fair, it's, it is hard and it's getting harder and harder each year for younger riders to, to get up into the, the stages like VSB. Um, but I mean, you just need a lot of support from your family and from your sponsors. Um, that's, that's one of the main things and obviously you've got to give it 100% when you're out there and try and prove yourself, uh, prove yourself for a ride. Um, it is getting tougher and tougher nowadays because I mean, you, you can have the talent and everyone knows you've got the talent but everyone wants money from you and that's the biggest part nowadays but um, to be fair if you can if you can prove yourself in the younger stages now and try and make the right move early on it does make it a bit easier you, me- you mentioned the money side of things obviously um, that money can come in various different ways because it, it can also be the money that you generate for the business so in other words how you're involved on the corporate side how you make the brand look good in the media that kind of thing uh, there's a lot more to it than simply turning up and racing isn't there yeah 100 um, percent when you go and ask the team uh, to ride for them they always say a budget and you think bloody hell that's that's expensive that is um, but when you when you cut it down and, and see where all that money goes you can understand why it's so expensive um, to race in, in the likes of British Superbikes but I mean as a young kid from now you, you just got to stick to what you're doing and keep pushing 100% and, and keep following your dream we're now moving on to the circuit for the pit bike open uh, round one of their weekend Charlie Nesbitt it is who leads the points after the opening round unbeaten at uh, Clandow in South Wales but Elliot Pinson the uh, net leader he's our pole sitter and the top scorer of the riders lining up here Pinson alongside James Rose on the front row uh, they're second and fourth in the championship respectively the second row of the grid Max Cook currently third in the standings alongside him it's Richard Holmes Williams who was well and truly in the mix in qualifying providing us with a a few surprises and a little bit of entertainment there Ryan O'Grady who rounds out the top five in the championship at the moment well he sits fifth on the grid with Will Howarth alongside him on the 96 bike we're settling in then for the First race of the weekend in the pit bike open category. And we're underway. What a rocket launch that was from P3 from Max Cook. A great start from him to immediately make progress. Um, Working their way through from the grid and away to complete the opening lap. That must be one of the toughest moments, trying to pick your position and uh, make your way through fast, but without ending up in an incident. Yeah, that's it. The start of the race is is the biggest part of the race. If you get a, a rubbish start then you can be back in 10th when you've qualified 4th and it just makes your race a lot harder to be where you should be. Um, But I mean, yeah, if you can get a good start and get off with the front bunch, then you've got a chance. Well, Max Cook uh, certainly made uh, a good start there to uh, fire his way through from P3, whether that really converted into position um, because uh, it it didn't seem uh, pretty tightly packed out on the circuit, just winding their way through. Can be tucked right up behind someone, but uh, that doesn't necessarily make it easy to pass them. No, sometimes you just got away from them to make that little mistake, run a little bit wide and just shove your bike underneath them. Um, But if you can get in front of them, and make a nice pass and it makes it a lot easier so at the moment it's second third and fourth positions that are the tightest packed coming up the hill and down towards the s's and again that's what you were talking about isn't it when you've got alongside like that try and make that into a move that's what you were saying previously yeah that's it it is hard um you got to break just that little bit later and when you're already breaking as late as you can it's difficult so continuing around with uh, Elliot Pinson breaking up at the front, the pole sitter. The timing uh, a little bit skewed for us up here in our commentary position, but uh, as far as I can tell from looking at the track, it's always uh, much safer to look at the track than it is to look at the timing anyway. That's it, yeah. um, P- Pinson's showing us 11th on the timing, but uh, it looks to me as though he's well clear out in front, and there's a separate race going on for second, which is held by James Rose at the moment, ahead of Ryan O'Grady and Will Howarth, who are uh, all tightly packed on the circuit. So a uh, three-way battle for second position as it stands, and then a separate race going on for P5 with Will Howarth uh, at the back of that group in sixth position. So, yes, the timing is well and truly out, um, and I think we're just going to have to abandon that for the rest of the race, but uh, close racing for second, third, and fourth, and there's the move. There Talk of is, three. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, he's just been lining it up for a few laps now, and I think he's just got a good drive out that first corner and pulled alongside him and just got a bit later on the brakes and made the lunge. 
He was a little bit too bold, though, uh, coming through the S's. He left a lot of room on the inside, and still they're going at it almost side by side. Uh, looking over their shoulders, is that a, is that a big no-no from your point of view? Uh, do you want to check on the progress of other riders around you? To be fair, in, in these sort of races, yeah, it's good to see where you are because you don't obviously have a pit board and, and your mechanics telling you where you are. But um, when you're up in the superbikes and, and in the 125s and when you're up coming, you have pit boards to show you how far people are behind you. So you shouldn't need to look behind. Max Cook has made that progress all the way around the outside of James Rose. So Rose, who was the rider who was looking over his shoulder a lap ago, had cause, good cause to do so, as it turned out in the end, uh, because he gets uh, blasted away. And actually, it looks as though now he's going to drop down to uh, fourth position. We're doing this the old way, um, are trying to identify the number boards as they come past us here in the commentary position. That's Richard Holmes, who's up uh, with them there. Richard Holmes Williams, who finished uh, fourth in qualifying, who is now up to P3, by my reckoning, and dropped dropping uh, James Rose one position down. So it's Pinson out in front and clear. Max Cook in second position, having made that uh, move on James Rose. And then Rose has dropped behind Richard Holmes Williams. And that is still the race at the moment. Third and fourth positions between the 126 of Holmes Williams and the 128 of James Rose, who's lost two positions. And from the moment he looked behind him, he ended up losing two places. And actually, he doesn't seem to have the same pace coming off the turns as the others do. Is that just a question of uh, riding style or positioning of the bike or uh, um, how do you view that? It could be a bit of both. It could be a little bit of a corner exit but I think some of these, these Honda CRF 150s are actually tuned um, and what I've heard I think James Rose has got a standard engine in so I think that's, a, that's played a big part definitely. So uh, you're giving him a get out of jail free card there <laughs> and saying that that's bike rather than man. Um, I'm happy to uh, defer to you on that one uh, as things start to settle down here with Elliot Pinson uh, four seconds ahead of Max Cook. Uh, Cook setting a, a new personal best on that last lap and James Rose trying his very best to uh, gain back lost ground on Richard Holmes Williams who sits in uh, third position in this race and the top four now starting to look settled in this pit bike open category gives me another opportunity to uh, have a bit more of a, of a chat with yourself ahead of uh, this season and well we're, we're well and truly into it now with two rounds completed um, in terms of the uh, the BSB and uh, you know the, the context of the championship overall have you set yourself any clear targets for what you want out of this season or is it just a learning year um, it is a learning year for me but I mean my targets are to, to try and walk away every round with some points that's the main target and if I can do that, I'll be I'll be happy. And if I can scrape into the top ten in some rounds, then that'd be that'd be a big step for me. Um, I mean, at the end of the year, the last sort of few rounds, it'd be nice if I can be up in the top five, knowing I've got the pace to run with the top boys for next year. Uh, but I mean, yeah, for this year, there's no pressure. The team has said there's no pressure for for you to prove yourself. We know you can ride a bike, so just just take it as a learning year and learn how to ride the super bike, learn the electronics and and the tyres mainly. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just getting my head down and doing my own races and, and making sure I can set the superbike up uh, and just, just learning everything. And it's nice to have a teammate like Sylvain Gattoli who's got the experience on a superbike um, and he knows how to set a bike up. He's, he's definitely not stupid, that's for sure. So it's nice to have him in the team and learn from him. And it's ha nice to be on track with, with the likes of Hopkins and Gintoli and people like that. How much help do you get, though? Because you always talk about the first priority being to uh, beat your teammates. Um, <laughs> to what extent does uh, everyone really want to assist you? Or is it, or is it good uh, in that sense? Uh, yeah, it's good in that sense. I mean, we, we do help each other. Um, we sort of, we want to be top Suzuki. And if one rider's faster than the other, then, then that's how it is. It's not, it's not a big thing. And, and they just want to see a Suzuki up in the top five as quick as they can sort of thing. So... But, I mean, it's nice to, to come away with the first three rounds, my first ever Superbike race, with some points. And, I mean, we can only learn from that. Talking about the uh, race again and returning to that battle for third position, James Rose set a uh, personal best at one stage to get right on the tail of Richard Holmes-Williams. He got held back for a couple of laps there in traffic, but now that he's been released again, he does clearly have some speed there. Uh, a 32 flat on that last lap. Obviously, as I said previously, Richard Holmes-Williams uh, isn't featuring on the timing, so I can't compare it. But just using my eyes, he's uh, down to less than a bike length now in that race for third position, which is the main battle we've got here with 
with Pinson out in front and clear. Max Cook in second position, having made that electric start, not quite able to capitalise on it because Pinson was the rider to uh, make it away and gone. Pinson, the higher scorer in the championship compared to Cook. He had a six-point lead coming into this race, and uh, that lead is going to be further extended as he uh, sits up and pretty at the moment. Uh, Cook, Rose, um, that's where the, uh, the battle is up towards the top end of the field, where actually uh, Richard Holmes Williams is in the mix there uh, with James Rose as well. So uh, close from second, third and fourth positions. But Elliot Pinson is away and gone. A couple of thoughts uh, more about this too. Um, I, I was team knowing, obviously, that you're capable of riding a bike to go a uh, new rider. But the events like this that you've been doing since you were, um, you certainly know your way around a bike. And it always astonishes me how young riders are already of youth racing. Yeah, like you can I'm ride a I'm bike. I'm going to interrupt position on the final back, down the inside of the... And on that occasion, it was home. Uh, James Rose interrupting you, but the uh, she's on the final two turns with Max Cook losing out and James Rose coming through. Good racing there for the top three positions. Pinson, Rose and Cook, the uh, declared finishing order on the uh, timing screens. So apologies for interrupting you. I was talking about the uh, youth racing and obviously uh, the years that you've had behind you before you get to BSB and clearly uh, a championship such as the uh, Cool Fab uh, Racing Mini Bike Championship enables you to uh, get that experience before you go to uh, British national level. Yeah, um, even when I'm at that stage now, I'm still learning every time I go out. and I'm still learning how to ride. I mean... The likes of Rossi, they're still learning. You you never stop learning. And I have been riding for a few years, but to jump on a superbike is a big step. Um, so you you have to sit back, be patient, and just learn. Learn all year. When you come to events like this one, do you get an opportunity to relax? Or are you uh, get it? I mean, for starters, I've dragged you in here. <laughs> so obviously you don't get that much time to relax. But uh, are you still able to go to an event and watch it as a spectator? Or, or are those days long, long past by now? No, no, I still come along and watch them, definitely. It's, it is nice to come along because, I mean, I can sit here with Roger and Rob who have helped me for the years. Um, and it's nice to just chill out and, and look at the up-and-coming riders. And it's nice to see how many people have got the talent to, to come up into British Superbikes. Well, it's uh, been brilliant having you joining us up here in uh, commentary. It's quite clear that you could, uh, you could probably do this all day long. <laughs> so, uh, well, as, as long as you want to stay up here, you're up here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to make any excuses for that. Um, and obviously, it's been great to chat to you. And, and even better um, that you've been able to help us while the, uh, the timing system's been down up here in our uh, commentary position. We're uh, just waiting to see where we go next in terms of uh, the next one out, which is due to be the AC40 Pros. is the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. The official partner series to the BSB.
It's a uh, timingless assessment of the AC40 Pros. We've uh, been struggling with timing completely up here in commentary for the last two races, so uh, apologies in advance for any errors that are being made as we go through. Uh, we're lining up now for the AC40 Pro category with Casey Gorman on uh, pole position, the current championship leader, Ross Maguire, alongside on uh, P2. The second row of the grid is Johnny Garnas and uh, Dylan Meller. Third row of the grid due to be Owen Meller and uh, Ollie Walker. Settling down then and the riders will look to the lights. In terms of the points, Evan Belford qualified all the way back in eighth position. He's the closest to Ross Maguire, who's the current championship leader who sits on P2. Not a good start there uh, from Maguire. It was a faster one from Garners, who gets the first turn first, but Casey O'Gorman then cuts through on the inside. So it's so uh, Gorman who is up front and leading the way as they come into the infield section uh, and immediately dropping uh, the riders in second and third position as Casey O'Gorman blasts clear out in front. Uh, second and third, a separate battle on, and then the rest of the riders streaming through. We'll see how quickly Evan Belford can uh, make some progress from further down the order at the moment. First, second, and third positions are pretty closely packed. Second and third in particular. O'Gorman, the early race leader, as they come in to complete lap number one then, looks to me as though we've still got Casey O'Gorman up in front. Johnny Garnas in second position and Ross Maguire is the rider who, as I said, lost out off the line. He sits in third position. Owen Meller it is in fourth position. I did think that Evan Belford had made some progress up from P8 on the grid to fifth position at the end of the opening lap. And Eddie O'Shea is tucked in behind him in P6. Dylan Meller was the rider to lose out in all of that scrapping on lap number one. And the fastest rider around was Evan Belford making that progress from P8 to P5. Johnny Garnas uh, got away very, very well off uh, the second row of the grid to get the better of Ross Maguire. And the current championship leader is down in third position. There's a gap behind him to P4. Owen Meller with uh, Evan Belford right on his tail. And uh, in fact, Evan Belford may have even made the break here uh, as they come back towards our commentary position once again. It's Casey O'Gorman in front. Ross Maguire has recaptured second position ahead of Johnny Garners. Evan Belford made that move, as I said, on Owen Meller to take fourth position. Eddie O'Shea still in sixth place, watching on as the others filter through. Those left-right sections that the riders were uh, challenged by yesterday in open practice. Each time I spoke to a rider down in the paddock, all they were talking about was the flip-flop. That's uh, given me plenty of cause for amusement as this weekend has gone on. The two chicanes, uh, firstly coming off that long, sweeping left-hander at the start of the lap. And then you go straight from that into a really short straight and then another left-right. Casey O'Gorman breaking clear. Ross Maguire has done well to recapture second position and is immediately reeled in O'Gorman out in front. So it's getting close for first and second positions. Meanwhile, watch for fourth position Evan Belford, who is under all sorts of pressure from Owen Meller, Eddie O'Shea and Dylan O'Shea, uh, Dylan uh, Meller rather, uh, in uh, seventh position. So that's a group of four riders going together. The battle up front is close. Less than half a second with Ross Maguire gaining a tenth of a second on that last lap with a new fastest lap of the race to sit within half a second of the race leader and a separate race then involving four riders from fourth down to seventh positions. Evan Belford, Owen Meller, Eddie O'Shea and Dylan Meller rounding out the top seven at the moment as they come round that long left-hander at the top of the circuit and into what they call the S's here at Red Lodge and it's uh, Belford at the moment leading them ahead of Meller, O'Shea and uh, Dylan Meller at the back of that group and just uh, working their way back down towards our commentary position. Casey O'Gorman looking over his shoulder as he comes onto the start finish straight once again. Ross Maguire is right up behind him. Johnny Garnas over two seconds in arrears. Evan Belford almost a second further back. And then it's that group of Belford, Meller, O'Shea and Dylan Meller who sets a new personal best on that last lap to close in further ground and actually is right on the tail now of Eddie O'Shea trying to look for a way. O'Shea is smart, takes the inside route uh, coming off that infield section, coming off the 180 and uh, holding on to sixth position. But he's certainly compromising his own speed on the apex of the turn. And uh, Dylan Meller is right on his tail. Eddie O'Shea is uh, in amongst that group with uh, Owen Meller. And, uh, well, that 
is becoming a trio now because Evan Belford is dropping them and starting to gain ground on Johnny Garner. The top two are Casey O'Gorman, who's looking over his shoulder once again to Ross Maguire in second place. Then it's Johnny Garner, only narrowly leading Evan Belford. That's where the race is at the moment. Evan Belford with a new personal best on that last lap. Eddie O'Shea was indeed passed later on in the lap by Dylan Miller. I did say early on that it looked as though Miller had the pace advantage and he has managed to take advantage of it by getting the better of Eddie O'Shea. So it's O'Shea at the back of the group now. Evan Belford, who tried to make a bit of a break onto the tail of Johnny Garnes. So it's Garnes and Belford running wide there. It's uh, Owen Meller, and uh, that's going to be another position change. Dylan Meller is going to make another position, having already passed Eddie O'Shea. Dylan now gets the better of Owen, trying to pick the brothers apart. It's going to be a challenge as they come back towards us. But it looked to me as though uh, Owen just running wide there, uh, coming through the left-hander and up Oak Tree, and uh, that has cost him a position. We'll see if he can uh, regain that as this race goes on. Garnes still ahead of Belford in third and fourth positions. And then Dylan Meller ahead of Owen Meller now, as I said, after that overtaking manoeuvre. Uh, Owen just running a little bit wide through the left-hander, leaving enough room there for Dylan to come through. And straight through, Dylan went on the number 31 bike uh, up ahead of Owen Meller now, who sits in sixth position. So it's Dylan Meller who's provided a lot of the entertainment in this first race in the AC40 Pro category by getting the better of uh, Owen up the inside, having already passed Eddie O'Shea. They are as close as they've ever been for the top two positions. And you saw Ross Maguire just thinking about a lunge down the inside of uh, Casey O'Gorman as they went through the left-right, the chicane that leads back on to one of the two longer straights on the circuit. Looking over his shoulder, still Casey O'Gorman, who had set a uh, new personal best last lap around. He was still uh, slightly slower than Ross Maguire, and Maguire has made up further ground this lap around, but there isn't much more ground to find before Maguire needs to make the move. He is right on the tail of Casey O'Gorman. O'Gorman held back slightly by a back marker. He cuts through though up the inside. Maguire has to go all the way around the outside and that gives O'Gorman a little bit of breathing room but he hasn't got much of it and uh, there's also a race going on further down the order where Garnus, Belford and Mella are starting to make the break. Mella with a new personal best on that last lap gaining in ground gaining in about half a second on uh, Evan Belford. Eddie O'Shea has got the better of Owen Mella who's dropped down the field continues he's now down in seventh position less than a tenth of a second separated them last lap around so uh, still close racing right through the field but the uh, race for top spot is narrowing all the time that last lap was uh, a bit of a breathing room for Casey O'Gorman who's been under severe pressure from Ross Maguire Maguire was held back by a back marker and it only takes O'Gorman to catch a lap traffic at the wrong moment and he is going to be in real trouble Evan Belford setting a uh, new personal best on that lap number eight. He's now two tenths of a second away from Johnny Garnis trying to find a way through. And then that separate race with Eddie O'Shea only narrowly leading Owen Meller. Eddie O'Shea having got the better of Meller and they're almost alongside coming up the hill. But O'Shea just able to break slightly clear and that leaves him still ahead of Owen Meller behind him. Evan Belford trying to cut his way through. Johnny Garnus is the rider to lose out and we've got a fall as uh, it looks to me as though Evan Belford has gone down there uh, coming on towards the Simpson straight. They were three abreast coming off uh, through the left and right handers and uh, Evan Belford who was doing such a beautiful job to make up ground um, has gone down and brought us out a red flag. Red flag situation after that fall for Evan Belford as I said. Uh, the three of them just getting caught up there uh, coming through the chicane. I said that they were trying to work their way through lap traffic. Uh, Belford was certainly gaining ground on Johnny Garnus and things were all closing up and uh, I'd have to have a look at another look back at that one to see exactly what happened because obviously it is over at the far end of the circuit but the immediate concern is for the uh, rider who went down obviously uh, prompting the stoppage of the race. We were only one lap from the completion of the race so uh, the likelihood pending official confirmation is that that one will be declared as it was at the time of the stoppage with Casey O'Gorman two tenths of a second up on Ross Maguire Maguire lost out in that uh, three abreast situation with the back marker O'Gorman was smart enough to run wider coming into the 180 cut back up the inside and pass the back marker on the inside Maguire was stuck on the wrong bit of the track had to go all the way around that gave O'Gorman a three tenths of a second buffer and he was able to manage that towards the finish as Maguire continued to gain but not quickly enough to really mount an assault O'Gorman, Maguire and Gar Harness the top three finishers in race one in the AC40 Pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the cool
Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. The official partner series to the BSB. This is Cool Fab Racing. Live coverage all season on the Cool Fab Racing Facebook page and on the website coolfabracing.com. Now moving on to the senior mini motos category. And interestingly in this class, two of the top three from the opening round of the championship not taking part this weekend. That opens up a real opportunity for uh, Will Howarth to increase his leading margin over his nearest rival taking part today. It's a 31 point gap. And his nearest rival in the series overall, Nick Bennett on the 711 bike, is all the way back down on the fifth row having qualified at ninth. So he sits fourth position in the championship at the moment. Fifth in the series overall is Paul Nichols, seven points further back. He at least is on the third row of the grid in P5, but it's going to be tough to catch Will Howarth on the basis of what we've seen. It may well turn into a question of uh, whether 
the uh, main rivals that he's got in the championship can inflict some form of damage limitation by at least getting as close to him as possible because Howard starting in first his nearest championship rival all the way down in ninth and uh, the next rider in the series overall down in fifth on the grid Richard Holmes Williams though had uh, similar pace to Will Howarth in qualifying and the two were swapping and changing in the qualifying rankings so we should see an interesting race here between those two Will Howarth versus Richard Holmes Williams on the front row second row of the grid Josh Darter and Justin Bainbridge third row of the grid Paul Nichols and Ryan Grant Getting underway then with race one, loads of creeping. There were uh, at least three riders out of their grid positions by the time the race got underway. Um, that's uh, ended up not really working in anyone's favour in particular. Uh, Will Howarth has made the break. The top two have been able to pull clear. So those uh, few riders from the second and third rows of the grid basically making a rolling start there haven't really gained too much out of it. Uh, instead, they've ended up dropping back somewhat as the top two blast clear. And it's Will Howarth and Richard Holmes Williams, who we expect the duel to come from. They were well over a second clear of uh, Josh Darter and Justin Bainbridge per lap in qualifying. So, no great surprises then that they've pulled well clear in this race number one in the senior mini motos. It's Will Howarth then and Richard Holmes Williams coming in to complete lap number one with Howarth out in front, Holmes Williams in P2. Close for third position between Josh Data and Paul Nichols. Nichols having gained a position on that uh, opening lap in respect of his grid position and now could do with making it up into the podium places. As I said, when uh, the main championship rivals of the current series leader, Will Howarth, are starting so far down on the grid, the best thing they can do is try and make up positions and get as close to him as possible so that if uh, Howarth does go on to make an error or does have go on to have an issue at a remaining round, they can at least be close enough to pounce. At the moment, uh, Richard Holmes Williams isn't close enough to pounce. He's almost a second back from Will Howarth out in front. It's Howarth leading the way ahead of Holmes Williams in second, Josh Darter in third. That's still the closest battle, third and fourth positions between Josh Darter and Paul Nichols. Darter who comes into this round on 27 uh, championship points. Double figure scorer in two of the three races in Clandau. He's getting very close now for third and fourth positions but not quite any position changes. Nichols still trying to find a way through against Josh Data. Separate races further down the order for seventh, eighth and ninth positions. There's a pack of four riders. But the race lead is unchanged. That's still Will Howarth out in front ahead of Richard Holmes Williams in second position. Still the race is on for third place between Josh Data and Paul Nichols. They're side by side coming down towards the bottom end of the circuit. Let's see who's bravest as they come over the start finish line once again. Well, briefly there, Paul Nichols made it through but ended up getting relegated back behind Josh Data as they came over the start-finish line. Less than a tenth of a second between them, but you don't need me to tell you that. They're as close as you could possibly imagine as they come round the 180. It seems as though uh, Data has the acceleration in a straight line and Nichols has the cornering speed. And that worked for Nichols as a way to get through down into the bottom turn. Again, they're close around the top turn and through the S's but not quite side by side, which is what uh, we'd need to see for an overtaking manoeuvre from Paul Nichols. A new fastest lap of the race from Will Howarth, followed immediately by a new fastest lap of the race from Richard Holmes Williams. Still less than a second between those two. They're well clear now of the rest of the pack. Josh Data and uh, Paul Nichols. Nichols having got the better of Data once again on that lap, but still less than a tenth between those two. And that's where the race is for third and fourth positions. The final step on the podium in race number one. Holmes Williams gaining a tenth of a second on Will Howarth on that last lap. But third and fourth positions first between uh, Paul Nichols and Josh Data. Nichols with the upper hand for the moment. Again, they're side by side. And again, we've got a position change down the main straight, but not quite. Watching the number 24 bike hold on at the moment. Nichols, as I said, with the cornering speed and Data with the straight line speed seemingly. 
Howarth with a new fastest lap of the race out in front continues to hold the race lead. As we come down towards the bottom end of the circuit in the race for third position, it's Paul Nichols who holds the place, but again, Data has the straight line speed and gains right up on him going down to turn number one. He couldn't get up the inside, though. Nichols is wary enough to know that he needs to block and did so coming off the final turn at the bottom end of the circuit. Through Paddock Bend, past the pit entry and onto the start to finish straight. Coming through the left-hander and onto what is probably the longest uh, straight on the circuit. Again, trying to have a look up the inside, Josh Data, but it's Nichols who holds the place. No change up front. Will Howarth was able to break clear on lap number five. And despite a new fastest lap of the race from Richard Holmes Williams, that gap isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Still over a second between them. And still the race is for third position. Still it's Paul Nichols who holds on. Let's see if Data's got the answer down the home straight this time. He's going wider. He's going to try and pull alongside, but not quite. Nichols doesn't have the same straight line speed. There's no doubt about that. It's Josh Data who has the advantage there. A new personal best last time around from both of those riders in their race for third. Fourth and fifth, uh, sorry, fifth and sixth positions behind them starting to drop back. It's Matt Birkin and Andy Whedon in fifth and sixth places. Whedon with a new personal best last lap around. And actually, that time was faster than anyone right the way up to P2. Side by side once again for third position. Paul Nichols uh, versus Josh Data. This has been quite some battle. Will Howarth with another new fastest lap of the race out in front. And I think that's ended the uh, race leading squabble as a serious contest. But the race for third has still got some mileage. Nichols holding on. Data right on his tail. As close as he's been. Nichols looking to block. Data coming down the inside anyway. Has to back out of it because Nichols had moved to block. And that was a, a good move once again from Paul Nichols. He's getting smart about his blocking here. Data is clearly the faster rider. He set himself up well for a cutback coming off the final turn to look to the inside line. But Nichols just moved left down the straight to hold on to the position. And that's what it's going to take in the run down to the latter stages of this race as they come around the outside of a back marker who thankfully looks over his shoulder and sees them coming through. Data alongside once again into the top bend. This time he's completely alongside and makes the pass. Josh Data through for third position. Paul Nichols dropping down to fourth place but making the cut back and coming back through again. Nichols versus Data side by side down towards Paddock Bend. And it's Data who moves to block. Can Nichols make the cut back off the final turn and onto the main straight? He does go for the inside. Data's on the outside. Data has the racing line back down into turn number one. And that's a well-crafted move from Josh Data with a new personal best lap. Nichols, though, comes again down the inside into the chicane to make the pass. So still it's third and fourth positions absolutely going at it. Josh Data versus Paul Nichols. Nichols has been uh, most stubborn in his defence of P3. Looking further back, uh, Matt Birkin has uh, just about held off Andy Whedon with a new personal best lap last time around. But the battle between the five and seven bikes could be uh, one where we may see a position change in the latter stages because Whedon has been coming after Matt Birkin, gaining ground lap after lap. Small margins in it, three tenths of a second a lap uh, being gained. And that may even be a position change coming back down towards Paddock. It's certainly uh, Josh Data still in front of Paul Nichols as they come in to complete lap number nine. But it's still only just between those two as we go into the final lap and it's still only just for fifth position as well. Matt Birkin though uh, gaining a little bit of ground on Andy Whedon that last lap. So uh, Whedon's progress may have been halted there as he sits in sixth position. Watch for P3 as they come up behind Justin Bainbridge to put a lap on the number 11 bike. The chequered flag falls for the race leader who now becomes race winner Will Howarth ahead of Richard Holmes Williams. But third and fourth positions are still coming around the top end of the circuit. At the moment, it's uh, Paul Nichols with Josh Data. And it's Data who leads them down towards Paddock Bend. Can Nichols do anything special in the run down to the line? He's almost alongside. He's blocked out. 
Will he get the cut back? No, he's trying to try and carry his momentum around the outside, but Data moves to block, and that was a fascinating race between Josh Data and Paul Nichols. Nichols held the position for the majority of the race. Data was eventually quite forthright in finding his way through, but although he was aggressive, Nichols then came back down the inside of the uh, first major hairpin on the circuit to reclaim the position. Data came again uh, down uh, Oak Tree and up towards the S's and came through on the inside line. Data then taking third position the pair setting a new personal bests on the final lap so uh, just shows how intense that rivalry was after the final step on the podium and it's Josh Data who really earns it in the end fifth position going to Matt Birkin good defense required of that position after Andy Weed and came on strong fourth position and missing out on the podium Paul Nichols Josh Data collects third place Richard Home Williams did his very best to keep up with Will Howarth but Howarth certainly had the pace in the latter stages from the mid-race phase gradually gaining uh, after opening a very small margin in the initial laps. And it's Will Howarth who takes the chequered flag, the current championship leader, making it four wins out of four and further extending his leading margin with his main rival of the riders taking part here today, uh, Nick Bennett's uh, Paul Nichols finishing down in fourth position. This is Cool Fab Racing. Live coverage all season on the Cool Fab Racing Facebook page and on the website, coolfabracing.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. The official partner series to the BSB. The penultimate uh, round one at heat race is the junior LC40 category. And the top four in the championship sit in the top four positions on the grids, but not in the order that they finished in Clandau. 
Current series leader is Aidan Davey after winning the opening two races of the 2017 season. He was pipped in the third of the weekend in South Wales by Casey O'Gorman. And it's O'Gorman once again who leads him here by sitting on pole position. Alongside him is Ross Maguire, currently third in the championship standings with three creditable third position finishes in the opening round in Wales. Third position for Aidan Davey, so he starts immediately and directly behind his main championship rival after the opening event with Bailey Stewart Campbell who sits fourth in the series following three fourth place finishes at the opening round while well, he is tucked in right behind them. Fifth position in the points at the moment is Louis Rendell, but he finished all the way down on uh, in 13th position in qualifying, so he starts from the seventh row of the grid. It'll be interesting to watch his progress from there uh, on that 101 machine. So he's got a lot of work to do now to try and make it back up through the field. And, of course, uh, with those qualifying results carrying through for all three rounds of heat races during the weekend, that's going to leave him with a lot of work to do, not only in this race, but he's also going to have to rehearse trying to make his way through the grid in his remaining two outings. So the championship favourites are up in the top, top four positions on the grid with Casey O'Gorman currently five points in arrears of Aidan Davey but with an opportunity to make up all five of those in this one as he goes off pole. Alongside him Ross Maguire he sits on 48 championship points compared to 70 for the current leader Aidan Davey who sits third on the grid. Alongside him, it's Bailey Stewart Campbell from P4. 39 points to his name, nine points in arrears of Ross Maguire, who currently occupies the third step on the championship podium. Well, the same three riders finished on the podium in all three races in this class at the opening round in South Wales. Aidan Davey, Casey O'Gorman and Ross Maguire, who sit in the top three positions here. Good start from Davey from P3. Immediately, Ross Maguire moves to block and does so. So it's Casey O'Gorman, Ross Maguire, Aidan Davey and Bailey Stewart Campbell leading away in the order that uh, they sat on the grid. Also trying to look back through the field to see if Louis Rendell is making any progress. Hasn't made up too many positions so far by the looks of it. The top three starting to break clear and actually spreading out somewhat in those top positions. There's a side-by-side -side battle uh, all the way down in seventh, eighth and ninth positions. That's the closest contest at the moment. Up front, Casey O'Gorman versus Ross Maguire. The rivalry is renewed and it's O'Gorman who has track position, but Maguire certainly has plenty of pace. Still, there's a close race on further down the field. I think that's Evan Belford who's mixed up in that one. There they are over the line, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, all with fractions of a second between them. Evan Belford does indeed lead that group. Sandy Horn made some progress on that opening lap at the expense of Jaden Toomer, so that's for P5. So it's Sandy Horn who has that position. Jaden Toomer locked in behind now, and then it's uh, Evan Belford from 7th place in the yellow livery who leads the rest of the group in the top 10. Belford, Cook, Lawrence and Brinson in that order. The top two, Casey O'Gorman and Ross Maguire. Maguire very close throughout that opening lap and still just as close on lap number two. The front four have splintered away and there's passing opportunities in fifth position as Jaden Toomer tries to get back on terms and we've also got Evan Belford trying to make progress. Belford then looking over his shoulder as they come onto the start finish straight once again. Sandy Horn has been well and truly dropped. It's Jaden Toomer who comes through for P5. Evan Belford up to sixth place. James Cook in seventh. Looking back to the race leading struggle between Casey O'Gorman and Ross Maguire. Their gap narrowed by uh, Aidan Davey from third position with a new fastest lap of the race last time around. It's half a second separating him from Ross Maguire in P2 and less than a second covering the top three now. Aidan Davey's trying to go with them. Double winner at the opening round of the season. Second position in the third race of the weekend. If he remains where he is at the moment, this would be the first time he hasn't finished in the top two this season. But he's going after both Maguire and O'Gorman. A new fastest lap of the race from him at 47.7. Two tenths of a second faster than Maguire and O'Gorman ahead of him. Maguire needs to get past O'Gorman very quickly because it looks as though he's being held back for now. Separately and further back through the order, Jaden Toomer, Evan Belford, James Cook, uh, Taylor Lawrence, Emmanuel Brinson all going together, all setting new fastest uh, personal bests last lap around. And it's Belford who's trying to make progress on the tail of Toomer down the inside. 
in towards the S's on that long left-hander. He's held at bay for now, as is Ross Maguire up front behind Casey O'Gorman. It's O'Gorman from Maguire, from Davey. Davey uh, dropping back slightly last lap. O'Gorman and Maguire both setting personal best laps. Here comes the next group across the start-finish line. Bailey Stewart-Campbell isolated in fourth. Jaden Toomer with a bit of a buffer now ahead of Evan Belford. And it's Belford, Cook, Lawrence and Brinton in that order. Watching them all flash through the double chicanes. Belford doesn't seem to have the pace advantage over Toomer, but neither is anyone able to get past him. James Cook, uh, Taylor Lawrence, Emmanuel Brinton and Elliot Dufton now rounding out the uh, top ten. Watching the leaders coming back towards our commentary position on the home straight. And it's Casey O'Gorman who leads it ahead of Ross Maguire in second. A new fastest lap of the race from Casey O'Gorman who's putting the hammer down. Ross Maguire trying to go with from second position. Three tenths of a second in arrears now. Aidan Davey. Dropping over a second behind the race leader. Still less than a second behind Ross Maguire in P2. Still a good race ongoing for sixth position. Evan Belford, James Cook, Taylor Lawrence, Sandy Horn, Emmanuel Brinton. All in the mix more or less together there. I'm watching a slightly anomalous timing screen once again. But keeping in touch with these riders as they go together in a group. A group that's developing into a battle of four riders now as they go side by side into the top turn. To me, it looks as though Evan Belford has dropped out of that battle, or dropped away from that battle, I should say. The race leaders are coming through the double chicanes once again with Casey O'Gorman setting another new fastest lap of the race. Evan Belford has indeed uh, dropped the rest of that group. And still a four-way squabble going on behind him. But no changes within those positions, even if they're very close now for uh, seventh position. I make that seventh position coming up the hill with four riders all in the mix. The race leader, Casey O'Gorman, has left Ross Maguire now in second position. There's over a second between those two. Then there's another second or more, more than a second, yeah, definitely, to uh, Aidan Davey in third. So the front three separated by fairly sizable margins now, and the race is for seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth positions. Evan Belford pulling clear of the rest of that group now. Taylor Lawrence, James Cook, Emmanuel Brinton in that order as it stands as they're side by side again, coming through the second chicane. Watching to see whether the race leaders are as they were. They come back towards us here in commentary and there's no change. If anything, the gaps between them are starting to expand once again. Over a second, the deficit for Ross Maguire from P2. In the series overall, this is going to leave him more work and it's gonna be bad news for Aidan Davey. A race victory here will give Casey O'Gorman the championship lead. Watching the battles further down the order. Sandy Horn, Taylor Lawrence, James Cook in that order. Three riders all packed closely together on the circuit. The leaders starting to encounter lap traffic and that's going to give an extra bit of challenge for them particularly as they're all enjoying their own races all four of them there in the lower order of the field now Casey O'Gorman trying to sweep around the outside of them cuts between the middle of them spectacular if anything through lap traffic here Casey O'Gorman two seconds clear he's got to be careful because he doesn't want to get mixed up in a separate battle further down the field when he's so far in front of the other riders in the same race as him Ross Maguire is second. He's having a lot more difficulty working his way through the traffic. I don't think Aidan Davies going to be close enough to challenge and we're well and truly into the final lap now. It doesn't look as though those podium positions are going to change. Full credit to Sandy Horn, who's clocking up with a new personal best on the previous lap, but uh, not quite able to change positions there. Evan Belford has pulled well clear. 
And Sandy Horn's got it all on just to hold on ahead of Taylor Lawrence as we come down to the flag for Casey O'Gorman, who becomes the championship leader in the junior LC40 category. Home ahead of Ross Maguire. Third position going the way of Aidan Davey, the championship leader coming into this weekend, has dropped out of top spot following two successive defeats. And that third position, his worst result of the season so far. Of course, it'll be satisfactory in the sense that it's a podium finish. But bad news in the sense that Casey O'Gorman has now won back-to-back -back races in this junior LC40 category and takes the lead with Ross Maguire getting into the top two positions for the first time in 2017. So full credit to Ross Maguire for a good second place there. Aidan Davey challenging hard on his tail in the early stages and Casey O'Gorman was also under pressure on the opening laps, but that was the way it broke and then the gaps gradually spreading out between the riders. The result confirmed then with Casey O'Gorman the winner ahead of Ross Maguire in second. Aidan Davey gets third. An extremely isolated race for Bailey Stewart Campbell who finished uh, well back from the top three, but also well well clear from that separate battle further behind him. Jaden Tuma rounding out the top five in race number one in the junior LC40 category. Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship, the official partner series to the BSB. The last of the round one races here this afternoon at the second round of the 2017 Cool Fab Racing Mini Bike Championship. And it's the Mini F1 sidecars, the series currently led by the number tw 26 outfit ridden by uh, Mick Williams. 75 points out of 75 at the opening round, undefeated in three appearances. Second in the series is the number 25 outfit ridden by Paul Qualters Senior. 53 championship points with two second places and then a fourth position finish in the third race. The third race of the weekend was actually the most entertaining in the Mini F1 sidecars. There was quite a battle on, uh, particularly for third position at one stage for second. Adrian Ems was involved in that battle uh, on the number 76 outfit, but not participating this weekend. The only one of the top five in the championship missing here at Red Lodge. 
The top two in the series occupy the top two positions on the grid. Third position in the championship points at the moment is the number 17 outfit ridden by Danny Stainer. That's third row of the grid. Fifth position, P5. And then fifth in the series points is the 230 outfit ridden by Mark Parker who sits on P4 on the grid. The top four are already settled in and the rest of the outfits just being brought into line in their respective starting positions. Next onto the grid is the number 17 outfit ridden by uh, Danny Stainer, who as I said sits third in the championship but could only manage fifth in qualifying so it will be important for them to try and make up positions as quickly as possible. Watch out for positions one, two and five on the grid then in the context of the championship overall. Mark Parker there in P4 to try and generate an upset. The outfits building up their revs. We'll watch the lights and then we'll be underway. Mick Williams was comfortably... Oh, what a good start that is from P5. So I did suggest that Danny Stainer was the uh, outfit to watch. Firing away from fifth on the grid, straight up to third position. And already right on the tail of second place, the number 25 outfit ridden by Paul Qualters. So now we're in championship order. But that might not be for long, the way that number 17 is making progress. It's the 26 outfit ridden by Mick Williams that's out in front. P2 is the 25 outfit ridden by Paul Qualters. And straight up to third is the number 17 outfit ridden by Danny Stainer. Stainer was lapping in the 41s in qualifying. And the fastest time in qualifying was the 36-1. So you can see that that's a, a near five-second deficit per lap in qualifying. Well, it looks as though Danny Stainer on his number 17 outfit has managed to step it up for the race. It's the number 26 outfit ridden by Mick Williams that leads the way by over a second ahead of Paul Quarters on the 25 outfit in P2. He's dropping well back. Williams did have about a second elapsed advantage at the opening round in Klandau and uh, one and a half seconds a lap advantage in qualifying here at Red Lodge. So no great surprise that he's blasting away out in front and by barring mechanical dramas, you'd expect him to go on and win here. Dropping back in second position, the number 25 outfit ridden by Paul Quarters. Two seconds in arrears. Danny Stainer's number 17 outfit over a second back. And then actually staying with him in P4, it's the number 200 outfit piloted by Ben Brunt, who was third in qualifying ahead of Mark Parker's 230 outfit that's been well and truly dropped in P5 here, not living up to expectations after qualifying. The closest race on the circuit is third and fourth positions. The number 17 outfit ridden by Danny Stainer and the number 200 outfit ridden by Ben Brunt. Half a second back and not really losing too much on that last lap, although Danny Stainer did set a new personal best just to stabilise that gap. It was a new fastest lap of the race from Mick Williams, a 36-2, a 36-7 from Paul Quilters. So uh, that's the closest he's got to setting a time similar to Mick Williams from P2, so that gap stabilising. Danny Stainer also on the pace, but uh, second back from the times being set by the top two. A new fastest lap of the race again from Mick Williams. Another seven tenths of a second dropped by the 25 outfit ridden by Paul Quilters. And the 200 outfit ridden by Ben Brunt dropping further in arrears of Danny Stainer's uh, number 17 outfit that sits in P3. Mark Parker's uh, 230 outfit with a new personal best on that last lap of a 39.8 but that's almost a second down on the nearest outfit in front of him position changes further back through the order in fact uh, a lively squabble going on uh, for sixth and seventh places although now that those positions have changed hands it looks as though the gap is starting to emerge between them once again. Those two are just coming around the chicane at the top end of the circuit and down towards the Simpson Strait, and that's the closest battle on the track at the moment. Four outfits all pretty close together as they come on towards the start-finish straight once again. That group is led still by the number 24 outfit ridden by Paul Quilters Jr., the number 127 outfit piloted by John Hosker almost alongside. They're almost three abreast at one stage there. 
as the race leaders start to come through towards them. Trying to keep in touch with uh, that battle further down the order as they make their way away from us down at the top end of the circuit, out of view briefly through the S's and then back down towards our commentary position on the home straight. It's still unchanged in terms of those top five positions and sizable gaps starting to emerge between them. The really interesting race is for sixth and seventh positions. A four second margin out in front for the number 26 outfit ridden by Mick Williams. Second place still with the 25 outfit ridden by Paul Qualters Senior as we come into the final lap now. Final lap board being shown. It's going to be a comfortable race win as it was in all three of the races at Klandau for the number 26 outfit ridden by Mick Williams. The chequered flag is ready and waved as Mick Williams makes it four wins out of four in 2017. Second outfit home is the 25 ridden by Paul Qualters. And a new personal best on the final lap from the number 17 outfit ridden by Danny Stainer to give him some cause for optimism ahead of the second round of races tomorrow. But Stainer beaten on this occasion uh, by two seconds uh, by Paul Quarters' number 25 outfit in arrears of Mick Williams. So your top three finishers then, as they were at the opening round of the season, uh, the number 26 uh, piloted by Mick Williams, making it four wins out of four this season. Paul Quarters back up into P2 after dropping points at the third race of the weekend in Clandau and third position, maintaining a, a run of third position finishes. Now that's a fourth successive P3 result for the number 17 outfit piloted by Danny Stainer. This is the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. The official partner series to the BSB. on the track so uh, stay on by and uh, join uh, Max Cook and Charlie Nesbitt for a track walk in a few moments time down on the circuit uh, any young aspiring riders who might want to gain the advantage of their knowledge and um, they're going to be walking the circuit in a couple of moments time uh, from the start finish line of course uh, right at the start of the lap <laughs> where else would we uh, dream of starting and they'll take you on a, on a walk of the track um, and any information that you can gain by asking them any questions that you've got they'll be happy to answer them that's a real opportunity so any young riders that uh, fancy uh, doing one more lap of the circuit but this time on foot uh, join Max Cook and Charlie Nesbitt out on the circuit. 
So that's the conclusion of round one of the racing here at round two of the 2017 Cool Fab Racing Mini Bike Championship. Before we uh, completely leave you for today, in fact, I'm going to hand over to an interview that I conducted earlier on today with Luke Mossy. So I'm now joined by uh, Luke Mossy, 24-year-old graduate from uh, Fab Racing and a current ambassador for the series as well. Um, clearly here at Red Lodge, this is uh, something of a local round. I think you're based in Cambridge. So uh, always nice to make a trip back to see uh, your roots as well to an extent. Yeah, definitely. It brings a lot of uh, happy memories back. Um, you know, it's just great to see this, uh, the young kids doing, you know, following the dream that we all have in this series. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Obviously, this is uh, part of a career ladder, uh, one that in your case has taken you right up to uh, BSB. Um, tell us a bit about how it worked once you'd moved on from this championship. Um, what the next steps are that these riders can aspire to, uh, be that uh, one, two, fives and so on and so forth. Yeah, we, um, we graduated onto the Metric at 50s in this series and then onto the 70s. And then they also had a Spanish championship on uh, the Metric at Metric, um 50cc and 70cc geared bikes so uh, we've done that for a year and then we progressed straight into 125s in Spain um, done that for a few years and then we eventually come back to uh, to the UK in 2009 in Superstock 600 and uh, and then we quickly progressed um, after a year straight into Supersport in 2010 um, and then we was there for five years won a couple of races we didn't really have the best years in Supersport to be fair we had a lot of injuries and sort of a lot of setbacks but um you know, we finally made our uh, our debut in uh, the BSB class in 2015, and uh, yeah, third year on, uh, we uh, just won our first race on the on the weekend. So uh, yeah, pretty good. Before we talk about uh, this season, you, you've mentioned Spain there. Uh, a lot of riders seem to get a lot of track time. Is that just so that they can top up their tan as well? What yeah. what's, what is it all about going to Spain and, and doing extra um, laps? To, if you go to Spain, it's more you get more a lot, lot more track time basically. Um, the series are quite good over there because you know over here it's quite limited on to what you can do on uh, some of the UK tracks but uh, yeah it's just it's a great stepping stone and I think uh, young Charlie Nesbitt's doing motor, junior motor free world championship now over there so you know it's great for for him coming from this series as well uh, but yeah it's, uh, it's a really good series back out in Spain. As for uh, back to the UK then, I think your third season now in uh, BSB, so you're well and truly entrenched among the uh, the regular competitors um, in that competition. And, and as you said, uh, a double race victory um, last time out. Uh, you can't really ask for too much better than that, can you? You must have been delighted. Yeah, uh, we got our new engine on uh, the Wednesday. We tested it Wednesday before we headed to Mallory on the first day. And then uh, straight when we got the bike out of the crate on Friday morning, you know, the bike was just superb. Um, we only made minor settings to the bike just to suit the brand's indie circuit and uh, you know we weren't outside the top four all weekend and then coming to qualifying and we qualified second which we was pretty happy about um, uh, we know we've done our we all done our homework that weekend with our race pace and uh, yeah eventually got our first maiden win in superbike so just absolutely delighted and then uh, two come along in one so we've done the double um, yeah just a, a all-round fantastic weekend the sensation and the comments from a lot of the pundits were, OK, uh, that's the first race victory. Now the floodgates are going to open and then immediately to come out with the second one. I suppose they were quite smug with themselves to have been proved right. Uh, <laughs> two race victories. So where do you go from here? Um, you know, we're second in the championship now, just five points off my teammate Leon. Um, yeah, things are looking really positive. Um, you know, it's only round two. We've still got a long way to go in the season. You know, there's still going to be the likes of Shaky coming through. He's having a bit of a hard time at the moment, but... Um, yeah, just looking really uh, positive. You know, I'm really happy with the bike. I've never had such a strong start to a season, and that's including my super sport career um, and super stock career. But um, yeah, it's a long season, and you know we've got Alton Park next weekend, another circuit that I really enjoy. And you know, we just need to make, keep making sure that we uh, keep racking up these podium credits, ready for uh, for the showdown. And you know, now we've got these uh, say first win, these first two wins. You know, we want a, a couple of more for the end of the season. But yeah, looking in uh, really good shape now for uh, for the rest of the season. Clearly, you're not uh, perturbed by any of the big names or anything like that. But what's it like to ride along? And a rider with plenty of experience uh, in superbike competition. Attention, Paddock. Attention, Paddock. Any riders who want to join Charlie Nesbitt and Max Cook down on the start line, picking up some valuable uh, experience and maybe have a chat and a track walk with them, head over to the start right now. Thank you. Uh, being one, two for, uh, for the rest of the season.
I'm sure for you, though, uh, you'd rather the order were, were switched the other we're way around. We're working on it, so we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the plan to try and capture that this weekend and then, and then go forward from there. Um, in terms of you know, development of the bike and, and that side of things, how much will you have gained from regular track time, right? well, since the age of six, I, I would suspect, uh, for yourself? Uh, well, I haven't been off a bike since I was six. You know, it's, it's sort of what we've... These two wins in the weekend is what we've worked and starting here, what we worked all the way through our whole life to uh, to get to. And, you know, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but, you know, it's what these uh, moments are worth it. Um, you know, it's just great to see the young kids doing well in this series and obviously the BSV Championship are now involved with the cool, cool Fab Milk Racing. So, uh, yeah, it's just such a great stepping stone starting at this level and uh, hopefully to see a lot of these kids in uh, British Championships in the next couple of years. We always talk at Cool Fab about being a professional athlete, being a professional uh, motor racer, being more than simply going out, getting on the bike and, and doing that side of things. Um, using your experience, obviously, racing in BSB, what can you advise the riders? What do they need to be doing to make sure that they get those opportunities, that they're able to, to progress? And then, um, you know, in the same way that you're an ambassador, you're also representing your brand. Um, yeah, what, what are those types of things that they need to be doing the biggest thing is really just to keep sticking at it you know eventually it will come and you know you're only young you, you're learning all the time and i'm still learning now you know on the weekend we was learning again um, you never stop learning in this game and you know for the kids you know we there's a few times when we was younger that we thought about giving up but you know you just got to keep sticking at it and eventually hopefully something will come along one day and uh, be in such a high championship like bsb at the moment, the target and the focus is obviously to, w to win the championship this season. Um, where do you see yourself going forward? What are your aspirations? Because I'm sure that you still um, continue to, to set goals ahead of yourself in the years to come. Um, you know, it's my third year in BSB, so we're st still early days yet in uh, my career in the British Super Bike Championship. Uh, yeah, obviously now we are looking to be hopefully British champion this year. If not, you know, the next year. It's my third year now with uh, Bournemouth Kawasaki. Um, yeah, it's going really well, and you know, like I said, just keep learning, keep chipping away. You know, our first year in BSB weren't, didn't really go to plan at the start of the year. I don't think we even got a point till halfway through the season. So, um, you know, just got to keep sticking at it, and um, yeah, it'd be nice to uh, to go to World Championships one day. Um, obviously, our sights are set on the BSB at the moment. You know, we're still quite young in our career, so. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to have a shot at world level, but, you know, hopefully we can uh, be British champion in uh, the next two or three years. Having a look at your uh, social media accounts uh, previously, um, there's certainly been a lot of activity, uh, clearly, around uh, the double race victory, a lot of media presence and, and that kind of thing, which clearly is something you, you want to capitalise on. Um, is it also quite a lot of pressure um, that you've managed to put on yourself there by taking two race wins? Uh, yeah, I mean... I put more pressure on myself than the team do. You know, I expect myself to win. Um, I'm not there to sort of make up the numbers, you know, without sounding arrogant. You know, I want to win. It's uh, it's all about standing on the, the rostrum for me and tasting that champagne, the winner's champagne. Um, it's nice being in the limelight. Um, yeah, and like I said, hopefully we keep getting a few more wins and uh, hopefully we can get spotted to go to uh, to World World Superbikes maybe. But, yeah, it's uh, it's all looking positive. As for here today, uh, nice sunny day. There was a bit of a threat of rain this morning on my way up uh, this morning. I was uh, drenched in the, in the car coming to the circuit. Um, nice weather. Um, obviously, an opportunity for you to come and meet people that you know and that you've seen over the years. I'm sure there are quite a lot of familiar faces for you. Yeah, quite a lot of familiar faces. It's, not, it's just nice to come back into this paddock. Um, like I said at the start, it just brings floods back of memories. Um, yeah, it's just great seeing the young kids doing something that we all love, you know, the bike racing, and I just hope one day that we see some of these kids in uh, in the British Superbike Series, for sure. Um, like I said, I keep sticking at it, and uh, yeah, the glad the sun stayed out for you, because it was looking a bit <laughs> uh, a bit wet this morning, but uh, yeah, the weekend's looking okay now with uh, with the weather front. Is there much that you can do to uh, advise these guys, or, or do some of them struggle to take on feedback, even from a rider with your experience? Not really, because I'll probably be the slowest out there if I was with the kids. <laughs> but, uh, you know, from what I've seen so far, the kids are really looking uh, smooth and fast. So, you know, I haven't really got any pointers for anyone at the moment, to be fair, because everyone's looking super cool. So, yeah, it's just great to be, uh, to be here watching. Your role as an ambassador for the championship, um, is that just about giving people the opportunity and, and knowing, you know, introducing them to the fact that there is this opportunity from the age of six to, to get involved and start racing. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's nice to just come along and, you know, if I, every time that I am here, you know, you never, never feel afraid to come and ask me a question. You know, I'm always 
here to help with uh, the cool fab guys. So, yeah, if ever there's uh, anything you need to ask me, just come and stop me and uh, I'll try and point you in the right direction. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for coming and joining us as well. Uh, we know that your time is very valuable, <laughs> particularly as you've been uh, in such media demand following those two race victories. Uh, wish you obviously the best of luck for Alton Park uh, coming up next, the third round of the season, and for the remainder of the championship. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Cheers.